I spent another thousand days in hardcore Minecraft. During this time, I managed to get unlimited hearts, build a massive multi-biome mineshaft, a giant building for brewing, and a massive map of my entire world with a cool pixel art on it. I know this video is pretty long, so if you don't want to watch it all, just, just leave it running in the background, as that helps me and my channel out so, so much. And also get my new summer merch on sp737.store. I'm going to become immortal in hardcore by getting infinite hearts. Step one, I need emeralds. These can be obtained at the raid farm. That's enough of that, and that's enough of those. Now for step two, get some apples. The best place for them, the void trader. This guy sells them, and I buy them. Step three, this terrain has got to go. Starting with the trees, these two randomers, and now the rest of it. Now I need yellow terracotta. I could make a massive clay farm, or I could just murder villagers till one sells me it. I think you know what I'm gonna do. Perfect, you may live, and now I'm gonna get thousands from him. I can't believe infinite hearts has never been done before, and it's something you can do in your world. Step four, I need frog lights, and this is the perfect farm for that. Unless, of course, you're a magma cube. Three stacks will do, and whilst I'm in the nether, I need to grab a load of quartz. A stack is a good start, but I need plenty more. And all this will make 400 blocks, which can go into here and into the super smelter. I'll also make a new pickaxe for silk touch and make everything netherite. Next, it's timer time. One hour on the clock, and if I get 300 gold ore, you have to subscribe. And this just might be the perfect cave. Here's the first ones, and some more. Everything really is coming together. Although 300 is still quite far away, so thank goodness it's a very big cave. That's the first 100, but I'm way behind schedule, and I need to find a new area. Maybe 300 in an hour was a little bit too ambitious. Hang on a minute, this is exactly what I need. Half the time has already gone. I need an insane 10 minutes to get me back on track. That's 150, meaning I'm past halfway, and if I can get to 200 before 40 minutes, then I'll be back on track. But that's easier said than done. I've made it to 200, but finding another 100 in just 15 minutes is going to be so, so tight. I've made it to 250 with just 10 minutes left, and this cave might be the saviour that I need. It's going to be so, so close. That's 260, 270, 280. I'm getting so, so close. 290, I just need 10 more, and I have 7 minutes left. And now I, I can't seem to find gold anywhere. Just these stupid diamonds. Hang on a minute. There was five away. Now, hold on a second. I've done it. 300 gold in less than an hour. A little bit more around here to be found too. Now, for true immortality, the method needs a lot of notch apples. So I'm going to count them up. 96 is how many I have. Didn't know that. But I, I need more. And I've got a new strategy to get them. It involves mob switches for four different mobs. I'll start with the bat switch. But the most important thing is the location. Because if I fly past and load the chunks, then it will break. I'll start by removing this portal and building a much bigger one right here. Perfect. And it also needs a bit of glass on top. With the edge of the portal being here, I need to go five chunks in this direction. Which is where I will build a bat farm. It's basically going to be a load of portals, but in order for bats to spawn, it'll have to be completely pitch black. But nether portals give off light, so how do you make them pitch black? You use light suppression. It's been a while since I've needed to use this machine, and I won't turn it on just yet until everything else is sorted. One thing I'm grabbing is amethyst shards, because I will need tinted glass. Next, I box it in, but I'd leave a little gap here, since I need a way in and out to light the portals. Now for the next bit, sponge. This is basically going to work by sending bats through a portal, they'll be in the nether for a little bit, then be sent back through this portal, but I will be here, so this over here will be a lazy chunk where they come through, and mobs in lazy chunks don't despawn, and they count the mob cap, so that's why no more bats in the world would spawn, and I'd just be chunk loading over here. And it basically means I can't come within 500 blocks of that very chunk, because then the bats would load, then they despawn, everything would just go wrong. So a warning square to stay away needs to be built. This will also be way, way easier if I use lily pads, so that scaffolding isn't necessary. I've seen straight lines, but I, I guess it'll do. Place them on land is, is much, much easier. The end is now starting to come into sight, and the massive safety board 
order is complete. Next, I add scaffolding to make an AFK platform right at the top here. The bats are already spawning, which is good. So I think it's now light suppression time. I'm not a fan of this machine since it, it does make everything laggy, but it's a small price to pay to make what I need. And from flicking that lever, I have one minute to get to where I need to be, otherwise chunks won't load. Since that hopper clock runs out after 100 seconds. All these scaffolding are very, very useful to find my way. I have arrived. Next, I wait for the light suppression to kick in. Chunks are now not loading, which tells me one thing. It tells me two things, actually. My game is broken. Apparently, I have an infinite firework rocket. But the light suppression is also happening. I'll, I'll just have to reload the game. Time to light all of these. Reload the world again. Next stop, I go through a portal. All the bats are here. I, I don't actually know if the farm worked, but the first priority is get the light suppressor turned back off. I hate this machine. It honestly takes so much relogging to get back to where you need to be. <laughs> but that's why I've got these ladders so that I can climb up even when it's laggy. Finally, machine is off. Now for the moment of truth. Did it work? Nope, it did not, which means doing everything all over again. Moment of truth for take two. Yes, this time it has worked perfectly. Thank goodness for that. And it means I can now go through here, break this portal, and build the bat return system above the nether. This is where things get a bit more complicated. But I'll just start by building two nether portals. Got a piston and a bunch of glass here, followed by comparators, redstone, and more pistons. It is all nicely starting to come together, as you can see. And I can't believe it. Of all things, I forgot the glazed terracotta. And now work can resume. It's almost done. It's, it's starting to get a bit complicated, isn't it? But I need to grab a bunch of items that will go in dispensers and hoppers. And unless I've made any grave mistakes, it should all be done. Well, almost. This needs to be filled with minecarts, and a chunk loader needs to be built on this side. Job done, quick and easy, which means it's now time to test it out. I simply AFK up here for a minute or two, as bats get sent to the nether. Then I swoop on down, take one good look at this place, because I can never come here again, and all the bats are inside the portal. Then I press this button, and it, it should set everything off. Bunch of bats get pushed into that hole while their portal cooldown runs out. Once it does, the portal gets lit, they get sent through. I flip this lever to turn on the chunk loader. There we go, minecart through. And the that switch is activated. I don't know how I can really show you, but no bats will now spawn anywhere in my world. It's only phase one in my new Notch Apple strategy, but it's also the most important one. Also, a quick side note, I'm gonna make this chest tinted glass. It was the only empty storage slot in the entire system, and uh, now it's filled. From there, I'm gonna take out one of these to use this XP farm and get loads and loads of levels. Beautiful, I have just made it in any moment to level 700. And that is enough of using the farm for now. Just use these extra bits of XP to make sure every single thing is fully repaired. And then I'll fly on home to sort the next project, which will be to build a giant mega palace right here where I will get the infinite hearts. Since doing this will require a little bit of a fancy machine. And that phantom just totally ruined my shot. Although the difficult thing is that this palace will be made out of a few thousand gold blocks. A few thousand gold blocks that I unfortunately don't have. So that could mean only one thing. First, I collect all the gold that has been gathered over time at this gold farm, which is apparently not very much. Well, that is a, a, a slight spanner in the works. So instead, I'll head to this gold farm. Disable the fortress farm by flicking that, which turns on every single redstone lamp. And instead, I start crafting all of these nuggets, which have been gathering over time, into ingots and blocks. And then I can just AFK here as the pigmen get me more. From being here for quite some time, I've got a decent amount of gold here and even more in this chest. I don't know if it'll be enough for the entire build. I also seem to remember that I put some quartz in here <laughs> a little while ago, a few, well, well, however many days ago, uh, where will it be? In here? Perfect. The policy is going to be built right here. And as you can see already, it's going through my gold blocks fast. <laughs> Maybe I would have been better just using yellow concrete. Although if I did that, then it wouldn't look anywhere near as impressive. That's the foundation of the whole thing done. Next, I'm digging out the floor, which also conveniently gets rid of all of the snow. And also frog lights. Next, I'm going to dig out all of this, as well as the layer underneath. And then this is where all of the gold ore is going to come in handy. I wasn't just mining it for the good of my health. I needed it to fill in this entire pathway. And conveniently got over a stack to spare as well. Actually looks really cool, but on top of it, it will have stained glass. But I'll worry about that later. Instead, I'll focus on building up this second layer. It's definitely starting to come together, but it's uh, it's going to be a lot bigger than that. Maybe not the best idea to use gold blocks. I, I should have used yellow concrete. Not to worry, though, because I actually want to decorate this middle bit a bit more. And that will require red sand. 
Something of which I, I don't think I have a dedicated chest for. Okay, yeah, it's, it's definitely not one of these. Is there any lurking in the chest down here? Looks like the answer is no. <laughs> no, there isn't. Which means I must begin plan B and track down a mesa. Just have to remember, I can't go in a certain place over that direction because that's where the loads and loads of bats in a lazy chunk. Anywhere else, though, is completely safe to search. Not being much more than ocean at the moment. Oh, and I have come across one of my guardian farms. Still no mesa, but I have got a ruined portal. The worst ruined portal chest I've ever seen. So instead, I'll, I'll just keep flying. Hang on a minute. This looks to me like just what I'm looking for. Okay, well, it is what I'm looking for. Let's get busy collecting red sand. I don't need that much. Just enough to make red sandstone. Then I've, I've quickly got to fly all the way back home. And I just realized that I spent all that time getting a villager that would sell me yellow terracotta. There's an entire biome full of it. Yeah, next time I need clay... I know where to come, even if it is about 10,000 blocks away. I've got so far, and you, you know what? I've, I've realized something. Why don't I stop wasting time and instead build a portal and do some nether travel? And wow, it, it took me up there. I, I did not know that that was going to happen. And it's lined me up nicely to this area. Is that a sign for me to get a little bit more gold? So you know, it'd be rude not to whilst I'm here. Well, then I'll get a few more blocks. I just never seem to be able to get away from this place. And after a couple more days, I've got nearly four more stacks. Now to get back to what I was actually working on. Turning this red sandstone into the smooth variant. Then turning them into slabs and adding them around here. With that, it's starting to look pretty good. And I might as well add a few extra layers up here. The good thing is that as I get higher and higher, it is requiring less and less gold for each layer. Even though it's not a huge amount, I made a little bit more progress. Looking bigger and bigger all the time. Next, I think I should go and get stained glass. The colors needed are yellow, light blue, lime, magenta, and orange. Then they'll be placed diagonally along here, just repeating the colors over and over again so that it gives this cool rainbow effect. And the gold underneath kind of makes it look like stars. Oh, it's, it's just amazing. It absolutely does not get any better than this. And if you couldn't tell already, this golden palace is kind of based off a palace from Asgard. It just still needs to be made a, a lot, lot bigger. And whilst I haven't got the gold that I need, I could do a little bit more to the interior down here by grabbing a bunch of cauldrons, leaves, and buckets. Didn't expect to say this, but out of all of the things, leaves is going to be the one that I don't have enough of, since all the water can be added in no problem. And I can place some of these down, but I'm unfortunately missing seven of them, which logically can mean only one thing. I must head to an oak forest, get out some shears and get busy mining. I won't be having another leaf problem after this. Kind of makes it look like Hero Brian's been in the area, doesn't it? All these leafless trees. But anyway, I've got a lot of stacks. I, I don't know if I can count them all. Twelve and a half to be exact. And I also didn't want to continue anymore. Oh, don't crash into my house. But yeah, I didn't want to continue anymore in case I was to break my shears. So let's stock this up and keep seven for myself. Then add these to the build. And that's all I think I'm going to do for the interior. The only thing I might change is extend this rainbow road up to this. But if I'm going to do that, I'll do it right at the end when I've finished all the rest of that. And speaking of finishing all the rest of that, I'd first like to pop up on here to use the BTEC gold farm, which is... Oh, I missed it, but it's um, it, it's a lot slower. Oh, don't go in there, you would die. Yeah, entity cramming would have killed me. You know, I, mean, I was very close to death there to say how calm I am. Anyway, I'm going to get these shears repaired. And I don't know why, but this farm is no longer giving me gold. Like, the pigmen are dying, but nothing's coming through any hopper. Do, do I... No, you know, if I, if I start mining and stuff, it's going to break. I just use it for XP, but yeah, no gold ever comes through. Now, that's weird. I'll not risk breaking it, though, because, of course, I have a way better gold farm, which I might as well use. And this time, my aim is to definitely have enough gold blocks so that I don't have to come here again and I can finish the Golden Palace. Let's just get busy getting as much gold as I can. I think that's long enough spent here. Been collecting quite a bit of gold. I really hope this time it's going to be enough. For now, I'm just going to place these shulker boxes down and put the gold there. Because at this moment in time, I'm, I'm not quite ready to finish it. There's another project a bit more pressing that I want to get done. And that means, once again, getting the red wall as well as some obsidian. And then going to the place that I, I did say was kind of forbidden. Yes, that's right. The land of the Batswitch which has the red markers that must not be crossed. And right about here is going to be, I reckon, the perfect spot. In fact, on second thoughts, I can actually build it way closer to those red markers. Like, right about here. Look forward to when I build a machine to disable you guys as well. But yeah, more elevated for this one is the right place for it. Next, I need to fly back over here, grab the red wool, and make yet another border so that I don't go into the danger area. The only annoying thing is I haven't got any lily pads. And they'll probably become quite important eventually when I have to start placing them back in the ocean. Thanks 
Thankfully, at the moment, it's all on land. Although that's that's still kind of annoying because you've got to go across trees. Yeah, I've um, I've not got much better at, at making straight lines, have I? Even water that's not deep like this is still very annoying. Wouldn't it be nice if I could spot a swamp nearby? Well, at the very least, it's worth giving it a try. You know, it saved me flying all the way home. You know, it's it's not going to be a good job when uh, you've got more success finding jungles than you you have finding swamps. Well, there's there's, there's no swamps as far as the eye can see. So instead, I'm just going to give up, make a portal, and get them from my house. All this way for a couple of lily pads. Although it's actually not going to be just for a couple of lily pads because I'm going to grab a load of other resources as well that I'll need to make the glow squid switch. That's almost all of it, but I also need to go to my newest chest and get tinted glass. Realistically, not sure that'll be enough of the glass. So I'm grabbing the materials to make more just in case. Don't think there's enough in this shulker box, but I've got an amethyst farm right here, which could get me loads more. I knew this farm would come in handy one of these days. And now to go back to the mob switch site. It has a room portal and a gold block. Normally, I'm not interested in gold blocks. But since I started that new gold palace project, <laughs> I'll take what I can get. It's also super difficult to get to the portal that auto-generated. Because it spawned in one of these massive caves and I've got to, like, dig to it to get to it. Not to worry, though. It's been found. More gold. There's two blocks at this one. And I tell you what, glistering melons are going to be very useful very shortly. You'll soon see why. I've reached this border again. And it needs to be continued in this direction, almost into the jungle. But not quite, it's, it's just mainly over water. Which is exactly why I got these lily pads. Perfect, the entire board is done. Which means the next bit can be started. Step one, remove this portal and build a new one above the nether. I've made a good start on the redstone, completed the portals, and I'm ready to do the rest of the building. Definitely a lot faster to build the second time around, now that I know exactly what I'm doing. It's almost there. Just need a shovel in this dropper so that it, uh, you know, they can detect the comparator's got something. There also needs to be iron nuggets. Well, just 24 iron items for the hopper clock. Finally, I'll spawn proof all this. There is one thing that I did forget to bring, and that is the two buckets of lava, and also the millions of flint and steel. So there's lava in here, flint in this one, followed by even more flint, and finally more lava. That's yet another of these completed, and I want to make a quick journey back home, sadly on foot, because I've run out of firework rockets. And unfortunately, sugarcane and paper supplies are very low, but I do have plenty of gunpowder. And if I just jump on down here, swim super, super fast, and arrive at spawn and, and realize I I need fire rockets to get up there. So I'll swim all the way back, use the nether tunnel, and get to spawn that way. Minecraft would be just so much slower without a light and fire rockets. Anyway, there's some sugar cane here, and even more on this side. But compared to the bamboo, I'm, I'm not really happy with the reserves I've got. But anyway, that's something to worry about some other time. And I actually have loads of paper there anyway, so I don't, don't know, I don't know what my problem is. I just sometimes completely forget what I'm doing in Minecraft. That's a job well done. Next, I need sponge, and also snowballs, which I apparently don't have a chest for. And I also don't have an easy way to get them because of this shovel is still touched. So I'm hoping there's none- Ah, there is, perfect. A non silt touch shovel combined with this snow golem that I can fill up this shulker box. You'll soon see why snowballs are incredibly, incredibly useful. So firstly, the farm needs to be five chunks in this direction. Same position relative to it as the bat farm was. The only difference is that glow squids only spawn at level 30 or below. So I'm going to dig out the entire chunk at this level. Next, I'll make a portal in the middle. But when this portal is lit, glow squids won't spawn because it'll create too much light. Unless I place tinted glass. This is black stained glass. Got, got the wrong thing. <laughs> that would not be very useful at all. Instead, yes, the tinted glass. And before I actually place it all down, I've had a bit of an idea for a redstone system to make this even better. But doing that will require some sticky pistons. Apparently, sticky piston reserves are a little bit low, so it's uh, it's onto the slime balls to convert the ones that I've already got. Then all the way along here, they can be placed down on both sides. And then, of course, I can realize that I put them at the wrong height and they actually need to be down here. Also do the same with these. Tinted glass on top, followed by repeaters and red stone once again on both sides with a lever right here okay you know i think that's working well we'll put some more tinted glass here now the ground needs to go back and the size of the rooms need extending a bit more tinted glass is needed just to finish off these edges and then comes the ice because without water you won't get many glow squids spawning that's the way i might as well get torches as well just to light this up because of the the tinted glass it's not going to affect anything and whilst i do have a bat switch the, the yeah it's not currently in use as you can see <laughs> so stopping them from spawning would also be a nice bonus that should be everything complete the glow squid farm done or at least for the glow squid switch. Right here, I must begin building up very, very high for the AFK spot. And the real question is now, did it actually get me some glow squid? Since I've so far managed to spawn a wandering trader and a pillager patrol, but can glow squids be added to that list? Sadly, they can't, but that is probably because there's caves around me and I need to make sure that there's no water in them. It's exactly the reason why I brought the sponge. I'm also making the spawning platform slightly higher so that less caves are included. And this time it's working perfectly. We've got glow squid. So I can open that up. Some have gone through themselves and some need a little extra encouragement, which could happen if you just hit them with a snowball. Look at the, look at the way they just fly. They go so far from the, uh, the knockback, so we'll just uh, 
coach you in. Any moment now, you're going to go that way. Oh, you're a little bit high up. Okay. Oh, that's an interesting problem. I have to let you fly underneath again. Right. I may, may need to modify that so that pistons move those up as well. And you'd think that that would completely complete everything. But unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. In fact, you can see the little remnants of it here. Look at that. Glow ink sacks. Yes, because the glow squid, you can't really see because I'm stuck in the portal. But the glow squid die. Because there's no oxygen and, well, there's no water and they, they need water. However, there's no need to worry. I have a way to solve that problem too. Redstone going like that. And comparator, lever, subtraction mode. You go like that, as you can see. It's constantly using that dispenser. Then we've got hoppers with chests on top. And I'm going to fill quite a few of these full of healing pots. That's what it's going to take to keep these squid alive. Also, before I forget, I should probably build the chunk loader on this side too. As well as finally spawn proof the top of this portal. That's job done nicely. Also, once the glow squid are in lazy chunks, they will no longer need water. They won't drown or anything. They'll will you guys just leave me alone for once? Seriously, I cannot wait to make a machine that disables you guys. Oh my god, look at the lightning. Look at this. One went through a portal. And he's absolutely on a mission now. <laughs> I've never seen them do this. Look how fast he's gliding. Oh, he's finally discovered me now. Phantom's in the nether. Also flying in completely the wrong direction. I don't think he'll be able to keep up with me. Apparently the storage is kind of broken. That one's all right. But why have we got all these random items going? But to get more blockers and fix the problem. Just annoying because now I've got to manually take everything out. And send it back through the system. Now before I go ahead and get myself the millions and millions of health pods that I need. I think I'd just first like to see... If I can possibly finish this build. Anything's possible, so we'll uh, we'll soon see. I tell you what, I might just do it. I've still got a good amount of gold left in this shulker box. And the build is starting to get pretty high. It's not a million miles away from where it needs to be. So I'll keep going and hope for the best. I'm starting to get to the final few bits up here. I'm getting so, so close to the top. And would you believe it? I've run out of gold blocks. I'm, I'm literally nearly there. Don't get much more annoying than that, does it? Right, we're going to the gold farm and finishing this once and for all. This is quickly becoming Minecraft, but uh, AFK for gold all the time. Stole that joke from uh, from my editor, by the way. <laughs> that should be enough time, especially since I've got the other blocks of gold that I've been uh, crafting up <laughs> in there. It may have been a few thousand blocks in the making, but it is finally done. Also want to kind of clear out the snow on this pathway and get rid of this beacon, finish the path and replace the snow. From there, I want to fly back to the top, jump down this hole and have there be a beacon right here. I think I've just about got enough space for it to be a full beacon too, by the looks of things, which will be absolutely perfect. I'll get haste from it. I think that's going to be the most helpful. And just to change the way the top is, but like a bit of yellow stained glass, a, a pane will just have to do. And also five carpets. Conveniently, two wool makes three. And then that's with the two, that makes five. Quick maths with SB. Make that beam yellow. Cover it all up. And there it is. The golden palace is complete. And I have to say, I am very, very impressed with it. A place fit to become immortal, but we're, we're not ready for that just yet. No, I still need to make the squid switch, get a load more nut chapels, and then I'll be ready to do it. Get infinite hearts in hardcore. Never been done before. I could also do a quickly repair my elytra. They're looking worse for wear. And this gold farm should easily do the trick. So now it's to sort out my problem with the health pots. I'm going to keep the contraption relatively simple. One day I should make an amazing brew, but we haven't got that much time left. So, I've, you know, I've got to get on with things. <laughs> That's all the building materials. Don't actually need all that redstone, by the way. And I also do need quite a few nuggets just to go inside the hoppers and stuff. Now, eventually, maybe an offshoot of this room needs to be a mass brewer. But right now, I'm keeping it short, simple, sweet. So I'll make the contraption right here. This is what I've got so far. These droppers will contain the ingredients that will go into the hoppers and into the brewing stand. This is where the timer items are going to go. And then these are more for a, a sorting kind of thing so that, you know, only one item can go in at a time. And there we go. It's done. The redstone's here. It's just, you know, I ain't going to explain it all. It just is the way it detects stuff. And then if it detects that it's on and, and the, that this is now the machine can be on, that's off. Yeah, it, 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 it all works though. At least we're going to find out if it works anyway. As you know, blaze powder is going to be very very important. And of course, bottles. They're going to be very, very necessary. You can use this farm to get more nether wart. Just a planting that's unfortunately a lot of effort. Also need the glistering melon slices, gunpowder, and glowstone dust. Just going to expand this a little bit. Because it's going to be filled with water bottles and, you know, you need plenty of space for that. Also can put a little bit of glowstone down here with ice on top to make water to fill the bottles. Now let's add these to here. Once I add a million water bottles, the machine should be ready to go. Uh, now, it's, it, I think it... I don't know if it's... Yeah, I've done something wrong. Oh, I've just got to wait for these, these nuggets to come across. All right, I was, I was a little bit worried for a second there. There we go. Now... Okay, this is not working properly. Okay, well, now it is working properly, but that's not meant to do that. Let's just get those out of there. Obviously, just one or two teething problems as it gets going. But everything's flowing through nicely. And this chest is filling up. Okay, not with you, it isn't. I was having issues, but I realized that this is meant to be two ticks delay. I had it on one before, so now I've uh, I fixed it. And now it works beautifully. I've turned it off now, but I had to make a few modifications to this to make it work properly. I added a, a nice little T flip flop thing here because it was sending two pulses, so I kind of 
factored that into the design. Plus an extra repeat here because this was going off and then letting extra bottles and stuff. So yeah, we've got loads and loads. In fact, I don't even think I have the space to take all of them. I'd better pop to my house and grab an extra shulker box or two. And apparently somewhere along the line, I did run out of glowstone. So these ones are, are just healing one. I see there's a lot that are just healing one. And I don't think that'll be good enough for the, the squid. So we need all, just only the healing two ones. But all of that should be more than enough. Now let's fly all the way back up here. Add all of them to the machine. There's three double chest worth. It should be enough. I really hope all this works because th th this is something I haven't tested too extensively. I, I have tested it once, but there's no 100% guarantee. So I begin by turning this off. Uh, well, on, should I say? And it's, it's uh, dispatched them all. As you can see, I've got to get out of here ASAP before it runs out of them, <laughs> when there's not even squid in there. Then we fly up to the top here, and I would say wait for squid to spawn, but I have a sneaky suspicion that I forgot to flick the lever that will turn off the light of the portal. Yeah, I did. So whilst we have got a squid all the way in the corner there, more will be able to spawn now that it's much darker. According to F3, seven have spawned, and at least three of those seven are down here, which isn't too bad of a rate. Don't you do that. Get back in there. Come on. That's it. Go through. Come on. Let's keep you where we want you to be. I'll try and send them through at like the same kind of time. So through and through because there's going to be a bit of a portal cooldown, you see. I know what I'm, I'm trying to say. Basically, every time something goes through the portal, it loads those chunks. Meaning that for 15 seconds, the squid are taking damage, the, the potions are being dispensed. So if I send one after another for 15, then 15, I'm going to use more potions. And I, I don't know if I quite have enough for that. So sending as many through as I can at the same time is the goal. Pretty sure there's now enough glow squid in there. But I'm going to send through one more batch just to be sure. There we go. Hopefully they don't die. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully this just works. I suppose now it's time for the real moment truth. I'm actually really worried that I didn't get enough health pots. There is already some that, that have sadly died but the question is will there be enough alive left i've got to i've got to act fast when i get through um i i think we ran out of things we ran out to oh, sbu absolute idiots i've done the calculations and i now know what, what i must do first grab more glowstone dust trade with this guy to grab loads of glass craft more glistering melons then use this machine to brew loads and also manually brew them. I've sat here brewing for quite some time and I've got like pretty much four shulker boxes worth, which in my opinion is a pretty solid amount of work. And the auto brewer has also been working away, but nowhere near as fast as manually doing five at once, because obviously this is just doing one brewing stand speed at once. Other ones are doing five. Yeah, way, way quicker. I, I think, guys, I've got no choice but to suspend the glow squid switch. I'm really trying not to go over time and I've still got to get infinite hearts, now, I, I can do it with the notch apples I've got. I, I maybe wanted more. I know I have some notch apples left over, but that doesn't matter. We're just we're just going to have to power through. You've watched the entire video to see how this is going to be done, so, you know, I, I, I can't disappoint you. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's become immortal in hardcore Minecraft. I've got the notch apples. Like, 96 is probably enough. This is, ironically, the first episode which I didn't get any new notch apples as well. The, the one where I wanted them. Let's not worry about that. Let's craft loads of golden apples. I think that many should be enough. As long as I have the same amount of notch apples and golden apples, I'm fine. So, yeah, I've got, I've got loads of them. That's good. I was also going to make a machine that automates this. But it can be done manually as well. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just not going to waste time with, with creating dispensers. But I'm still going to stand right here in my spot. So, all you have to do, and I better get this right is if you eat a notch apple, okay, and then straight away eat a golden apple, N nothing happens, it, it didn't work. Just kidding, just kidding. It gives you absorption four, as you can see on the right, and watch what happens when that absorption runs out. It's got just two seconds left, but now watch my heart to the bottom. It runs out, and do I, I don't lose all my absorption. I still have six hearts. Now, what happens if I eat another notch apple, followed by a golden apple, oh my goodness. Look how many I've got now. And just wait another two minutes for that to run out. I now have 12 hearts. It's 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 OP, as you can see. Um, and then I just go like this. And do that. And uh, yeah, you, could, you can guess what's going to happen next. And look at this. It runs out and then it does another two seconds of it. And then that stops. And because it's like you get double absorption because you have two golden apples. I've now got 28 hearts in total. These don't run out, by the way. These just act as normal hearts. I don't really want to take damage because I don't want to use them up, but I've got to prove it to you. If I go like this... Okay, well, I didn't take damage. My armor's too good. Oh, wow, the snow's coming as well, but if I go like this... Look at that. I lost half heart, but it's it's still there. I mean, they don't they don't regen, but they, they just stay there. It's going to really annoy me that I'm just going to have half a heart now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> can I lose the other half, please? Thank you. There we go. And I can just keep going. I'll just do it again. Now I've got over 30 hearts 
It just basically takes me two minutes to get an extra six hearts every time. But it's an insane trick. I mean, I'm I am going to be undefeatable by the time. If I have every single one of these Notch Apples, I'll have 600 hearts. Yeah, try dying with 600 hearts. <laughs> That's a ridiculous amount. For now, I'll just focus on getting to 100. And once I eat this... Followed by another one. I have over 100 hearts in total. It's just difficult to see because the more you have, they like stack together. They don't spread out as much. I have gone a little bit over time, but I don't know. I, I want way more hearts. I'm just going to keep waiting every two minutes. So I can't really speed this up. So I'm, I'm just going to continue to, to get a load more. And whilst I haven't used up all my nut shovels yet, I, I think I've got more than enough hearts. I'm not going to keep going because, you know, it's time. The video's you know, gone on long enough, basically. But I think it's safe to say with this many hearts, I'm pretty much immortal in hardcore. This ocean has a mineshaft below it and I'm gonna completely transform it. Step one, I need snow. Lots and lots of snow. Plus some spruce. And also ice. That should all be enough. Now I'm gonna put back all my notch apples. Fly over here. And this is the place where I'm gonna build everything. I'll tower up in the middle, bridge out, and build a massive circle all around. Now that that's done, I'll make it more circular later. I need more resources like mycelium, mushroom, and mushrooms. Oh. Oops. Th that, that wasn't supposed to happen. Anyway, to drain all of this water, I'll need sponge. I've got three stacks here, but to remove all of this, I'm going to need much, much more from monuments. That's Elder Guardian 1 down, and the second... And finally, the third. From there, I can grab the sponge and do it all over again. That's four and a half stacks, ready to be dried, which is definitely enough. Next is to the nether, where I need a crimson forest, which is full of nylium. And then it's to a warp forest for warped nylium to be added to my collection. And whilst I'm in a biome full of fossils, I'll grab bone blocks, fungi, and lava. Now to head home, fly far, far away, and arrive at a mesa to collect more items such as clay, red sand, more clay, more sand, and even more clay. I've also found a massive lush cave, which will be great for getting moss, as well as drip leaves and spore blossoms. I'm happy with all of that, but I'll tell you what I'm not happy with. The durability on these elytra. So I'll fly up and out of here, drop off the stuff, head over this way, get rid of a captain, and I can repair everything at the Ravager XP farm. And that is 737 levels. And not to mention that every single one of my tools are repaired. Now I'm taking all of this dirt so that I can significantly improve this so-called circle. First by removing all of the dirt around the edge. From there I can make a brand new circle that I hope is going to look a little bit better. There we go. That definitely looks much, much better. All of this water is going to have to go. But for the majority of it, I've realized sponge is not the best idea. Since it took me absolutely ages to drain this place that way. Instead, I'm going to grab some iron, build a beacon that gives me haste too, and flatten off all of this terrain. A big enough area for the next phase has been mined, so I can remove this beacon. And unfortunately, during all that mining, my silk touch pickaxe did break. And to make a new one, I'll have to buy more books and use precious levels to put them all together. Well, level 737 was nice whilst it lasted. Now back to business. In order to create this massive build, I need to drain all of this faster than anyone else can. The plan is to use a water removing machine that requires all of these items. Plus some water breathing, because I'm getting sick of drowning. Now to remove extra kelp. Next, I need obsidian pillars. I must fly over here to add some leaves and all of the redstone. Now for a matching system on this side, which is a bit more complicated, we're going to look something like this. Now to repeat the same thing on this side. Now the machines can be started and the trenches will be made. Both have reached the bottom and be quickly destroyed. Then I must build sweepers to remove all the rest of the water. It involves a lot of leaves, return pads, and the actual sweepers. Now that they're done, I can place ladders and drain the entire thing. They've successfully made it to the bottom, where they can be removed. And I could remove the rest using sponge, but instead I'm going to begin work making the border of the build. Which will require a lot of concrete powder that can be converted to concrete. That's a job well done. These can be filled up. And operation build a massive circle can begin. Which has to be built all the way up to the top. 
And I also can't forget to fill in underneath it as well. Perfect, this bottom bit is ready to be drained when I want to. But before that, I want to keep adding more layers. I'm now on the final two layers I need to place to get to the top. The whole thing's taking like over 80 stacks of concrete, it's crazy. Tell you what, it's, it's starting to look pretty impressive. And once all the water is actually fixed, I'm, I'm sure it'll look great. And speaking of water, I think it might be time for me to get rid of all of this. That's going to mean grabbing all my sponge, plus a load of temporary blocks. Then I can build some walls and place down lots of sponge. One section down, plenty more to go. It takes a while, but it has to be said that using sponge is very... Very satisfying. And now on to the last section. I maybe made it a little bit too wide, but the, the strategy is kind of working. Look, I don't have to make another trip to Nether to dry my sponge. Then I don't mind if it takes a few more than it, it theoretically should. That's job done. I'll get rid of these. A lot quicker to create this than it took to create that one, let me say. And I think it's wise for me to go ahead and repair all my equipment. Because 15 layers of this now need to be dug out to have space for everything. And so the gold farm is gonna be the best place. Now that's all sorted, I'm gonna grab TNT and get to work blowing all of this up. And yes, that especially includes you. Wondering traders just do my head in. It's probably gonna break that wall, but I don't care. I wanna see them all blow up, and it didn't. Oh, that's brilliant. Good start for the TNT, let's uh, give it a light. And just watch the destruction. Yeah, no, nothing too crazy. But if I do this, get busy placing, then I can light it all up. And watch the massive explosion. Oh my goodness, my walls! Even an idiot could have seen that coming. But not the stupid SP737. So I think it's wise that I do some repairs. Then I can build a beacon. And mine all of this out <laughs> the old-fashioned way. That won't destroy all of my walls again. A TNT has definitely helped, but uh, there's no other way but slow and steady. And that is Operation Excavation complete. The plan is going to be to have this entire thing split into seven different biomes with a really cool mine shaft connecting it all up. So it does mean that this entire top platform is going to be a bit thicker than, than just a circle around the outside. And it's also going to have pillars coming out like this that split up each of the biomes. It'll look really cool when it's finished. But for now, I just wanted to get a bit of an outline in place that can be completely filled in with concrete. So you can probably start to see just how it's going to take shape. I'll probably build these pillars up at the end because there's going to be quite a bit of them covered up. So I, I want to save as much clay as I can. Although I do have these stacks of clay spare that won't go into a shulker box. So I might as well at least build up a little bit of a pillar. There we go. Not quite enough to finish it. Although these blocks down here are spare. So I can finish it. And I'm now going to use this opportunity to sort something that's, that's been annoying me for some time. No, nope, not you guys. As annoying as you all are. Instead it's the fact that the water doesn't flow all the way up to these edges. So the first water call is to remove these obsidian pillars. This is definitely not the most fun or the most fast job. That's the first pillar down, on to the next. And the second one down. Whoa, hang on a minute. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. It, the water's fixing itself. It's a miracle. I don't even have to... I, there's me thinking I'm going to have to spend like an hour fixing all the water. Just look at it go. I tell you what, guys. I am too genius for my own good. I can even control the water. You've heard part of the Red Sea. This is... Uh, oh, well, that's not work. I was about to say, this is putting the Red Sea back together. I suppose removing the obsidian fixes everything. Look at that, I break that and I, I, I can't really show you because I'm, I'm mining the obsidian. But again, it's all, look at it, it looks so cool, doesn't it? It really does, it's like a, a water pyramid. Away it goes, I'll get rid of another tower. There we go. And it looks like removing that obsidian has set this, I think it's done. Oh, and it looks way better, doesn't it? Way, way better now the water is connected to it. I do still want to terraform everything up to it at some point, but right now the priority is to remove the rest of the obsidian, and that's perfect. I think I'm ready to start building the inside. Started to terraform up the terrain. My first priority is just to terraform a bit of a floor. I think the biggest thing with terraforming is just to keep it nice and random. So as you can see, I've just I'm just kind of going. It's you know, it's starting to come together. I'm happy with what I've done for now. I mean, there is there is gaps everywhere and stuff. It still needs filling in. But I'll drop off all of this. And first begin work on the nether section. I want it to be a mix of warped and crimson, and this is the, going to be the crimson section. And for this first bit, I'm just going to build a bit of a staircase upwards. So it goes up to the top of here, and then I kind of want it to wrap back around something like this. And at this point, I'm going to kind of make it go into two paths like this. I'm also going to decorate the walls of this bridge with various things such as copper, blackstone, grey concrete. I'm going to have a bit of a warped section here as well, just in and around so that, that it kind of goes this way. It doesn't look like too much, but, but it is kind of getting there, I think. I could just do with some tufts since I completely forgot to bring it. And with that, I can start filling in the gaps and just kind of mixing in stone as well. 
It's actually really starting to take shape. It needs some warped parts to it because it's, it's very red at the moment, which is maybe a problem. I also want to add more decorational lamps around the area just to keep it all nicely decorated, lit up. You know, we don't want it to uh, be too plain at all, do we? And if I grab crimson trapdoors along with the fences, I can kind of make a bit of a... Oh, look at this. Brilliant. We can make a nice... Nice little border all the way around the outside. That is this built all the way up to the top. I can have a bit of warp nylium all the way up here. So that adds a little bit of blue contrast. Now to add concrete here, this is where kind of the pillars are going to come in. I'll also place down lava and have it pouring from the sky. Add a little bit more into here. Then these pools will all kind of flow into each other. With even more lava coming from the sky. That's all of the lava done. And I'll just finally add a bit of fire around the area for that extra bit of decoration. And the nether section is officially complete. Now that it's kind of pillared in and everything, I, I think it looks great. I cannot wait to build the rest of them, but I can't make them that complicated, otherwise I will not finish the build. That it is just way, yeah, I, I mean, it looks great, but I don't have time for that. So I want this section here to be a bit of a desert one. I'm trying to use as little resource as possible, but that does mean I've kind of got to place blocks every time I want to place a bit of sand. I've terraformed up this edge here, and I'm steadily adding sand to the top, but I'd also like to build a bit of a fossil up here to really give it that desert-like feel. I'm also kind of making each one the same, just so I can... <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just make it too complicated. This is the final edge I'm going to do, and once I place down all the sand, it's mission accomplished, or at least it will be once I've finished filling this gap in the wall. Let's see how it looks from a distance. I'll tell you what, it is starting to come together. And because it wasn't quite as complicated that one, I did build it way, way faster. I'm keeping things simple again. I'm going to do a one that's just like a grassy one with water flowing like waterfalls. I think it'll look really good. And I thought my days with sand were over, but I would like a little water pool with a stream. And it will just look a lot better if the bottom of it is sand rather than dirt, since it'll just make a nicer contrast. And water's not an issue. We've got loads. I look a little bit of extra sand in there too. So I'll completely fill all of this up. Yes, it's, it's looking pretty good. I will decorate it with grass and flowers and stuff later. But from a top view, yeah, it is, look at it, it's, it's really just coming to life, the entire thing. This is yet another area that is going to be a pool of water, so of course, it needs sand. I'm also going to have even more sand in a pool all the way up here, and the water can drop down like this to make yet another waterfall. And then this bit needs to be completely filled in with water. I think I'm happy with that. I haven't slept in so long that just phantoms are non-stop spawning if I go like above Y level. 60. I'm not going to finish decorating this one because time is of the essence and I, I want to get as much of this build done as possible. I, I don't know if I'll quite get everything done, but I'm, I'm going to go for it. As usual, I'm going to focus on all the terrain first and all the decorations can be done at the end. I know it looked good at the end of it, but placing all of these snow layers is just so much effort. <laughs> all the snow that I want down is pretty close to being done. And in here, I'm going to build a, a bit of a secret cave. We won't know who lives in this cave, but there's going to be a little, little bed down here. I want a campfire as well. That can go there with moss carpet around it. And finally, a chest and a furnace. And this will be the, the little cave. I, I just need to terraform the top of it and it'll, it'll look good, I hope. I suppose we'll find out shortly. Just a few more stairs around. I'll put a few, maybe one upside down. And I think it, it's come together nicely, is this, uh, this cave. Cool little secret for the build. I do also want like a cabin here made of spruce and stuff. I've kind of started to mark it out. But I've got to crack on, all right? I've, I've got to just get as many of these done as I can. So I'll, I'll add my cabin later. But from the top, this is really starting to look like a proper build. Just look at it. It'll be amazing when it's finished. Hopefully that's the day, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't hold your breath. It's just about everything that I'm going to need. And this time, I'm going to be doing a Mesa biome. As far as all these biomes go, this is definitely going to be one of the simpler ones. That's another tower completed. There we go. The terrain part is done, but but this is a mineshaft. You will not believe it because you, you can't see it. But I, I think it's time we added some of that part. At least it will be once I've added a few fences to this bit down here. Just so it feels a bit more like a boardwalk. From there, I've got to track down my spruce chest. There's at least some in here. Can't remember where I put the rest of it. I gave up. I've, I've completely lost it. So I'll just strip and mine all of these. Build as much as I can of some pillars. Fly back home. Grow more. And mine it all up. That should be plenty. Exactly 10 stacks. Yeah, it's a very good amount. And now the building can resume. It's a bit of a painful plan, but I'm going to have campfires that go all the way along to the other side. And then there'll be more here as well, although you're facing the wrong way. All I know is I'm probably going to end up taking a lot of damage. Operation get to the other side is complete. Then every three blocks, there's going to be mud brick slabs in between. From there, I'm going to add a few more pillars and I want them to be stairs supporting underneath as well. And what do you think? These are going to be added all over it to really give it that mineshaft feel. And I think I'll add a few like broken tracks this way since it's, it's kind of meant to be an abandoned mineshaft. Looking good. And then I can have it move into a second proper track Drag that's going to go all the way over here. I think I'll have this one stop here. Whether I extend it more, I don't know, but it could just be cool that it just kind of stops. Then I can have another one, I'm thinking, underneath it, so I've, 
I've built these two pillars next to each other. And it could be coming out of the mushroom biome. I don't know how far across, but you just got, I don't know. I, I think I need to build this next one though, so that I can know for sure. I also know I have more mushroom in another shulker box. I just can't remember which one. That's literally been the story of my life today. Searching through shulker boxes. Now I can get busy placing everything down. And now that I'm not placing sand, it's just so, so much easier because I don't have to worry about gravity. The terrain terraforming slowly getting there, but for the mushrooms as well, I kind of want to use this white terracotta as the stem and put red mushroom on top. I think it looks pretty good, which means I'm going to try and build another one over here. And yeah, I'd, I'd say I'm fairly happy with that one as well. Now I can continue with the terraforming. I've almost terraformed it all the way up to the top. There we go. I'll fly away because some stupid phantoms have spawned. Basically, the moment I go above sea level, they're after me. But hey, if you want a quick preview of how it's looking, it is actually starting to look insane. There's just one biome left to go, but before I move on, I wouldn't mind adding a few more mushrooms around. It has to be said, it's, it's looking brilliant. Look at that. All it's missing is that I swoop down here and grab water. Once I've plugged up these gaps here, I can start filling it in. Fantastic. Plus I can have a nice little water feature up here just to really bring it to life. So that is mushroom biome done. But I would of course like to add a little minecart track coming out of here with slabs in between and stairs underneath. All right. Final biome. What's it gonna be? Well, I've decided to mix it up a little bit and not go for an outside biome, but instead an underground one. Yes, this is where all the mossy items are gonna come in handy because it's gonna be themed around a lush cave. As you would expect down here, it's gonna be primarily moss blocks. But right around here, I also wanna make a massive mangrove tree that's, that's kind of, you know, a mix of planks and a mix of the logs. Just to give the section a little bit of character. It's definitely kind of starting to take shape. I'm just gonna put some grass blocks here. Because this is part of the nether section, I'm gonna fill it in with with coal ore. And these are like three big roots that are all going to connect to one tree and I think the tree could be made more of spruce than just mangrove since they have still got plenty of spruce available. And if I build a bit of a pillar next to this tree, I could have a track going out of it and along there. I've got my plan. I've just got to get this tree finished and, and, and all around it basically. So this is where it's kind of got to. I don't know if it fully works really. <laughs> now look at it. It's kind of just the way that these roots, I've got them going into the terrain is the, is the thing I settled on in the end. And from here I can just keep terraforming up with things like moss and dirt, you know, just kind of keep it. I, I think just random is, is the secret with terrain. And that's the top pretty much done. Just need to fill in this, add decorations, and finally grab some water to fill up these pools. Sorted for this layer. Now to do the same in this one. And finally this one down here. And I think that, that pretty much leaves it done. It's, it's got most of the decorations I want. Gotta hurry up and wrap things up, you know. <laughs> I've gone over quite a bit. But I wouldn't mind if I could just have a few glowberries like hanging around all up there. Just as a bit of extra decoration, you know, just to bring it to life a little bit. Make it feel like it's it's the top of a lush cave. It'll take a while to grow, but once they do, I'm sure it'll be great. And the absolute final thing I want to do before my editor kills me for going so far over time is just make one last track going across this way. Track's done, now I'm just doing the slabs, which I apparently didn't bring enough of. Come on, SB, basics. And then there also needs to be pillars to support it, and stairs underneath. And I'm also doing one more track along here because I feel like the desert needs to be connected. All right, and you know what? I think, I think we leave it there. I, look at it. It, it, it's crazy. I do still want to build a bit of a cabin there, finish decorating that bit. But as a general top-down view, oh my goodness. It's beautiful. Look at it, and the mine shaft just coming right through the middle. This is absolutely insane. I don't think you can really tell that it needs decorating anyway. I mean, I guess the top of that needs more than the top of that one, but yeah, it's it looks good. I, I, if I do say so myself. And now, do you know what it's time for? It's time that I did something about this mega base. I get the impression that you're not happy that I, I never did the inside of it. So I'm gonna sort it out. This would be a lot faster if I had haste too. And there is gonna need to be a beacon beam in the middle. So I'll get one made right here. That is now much, much better. That should be enough. Now to nip back home, grab light blue concrete, as well as stained glass, and then I can complete the walls. Mission accomplished. Another layer of glass is gonna go at this level. Or else it's gonna be if I just do it from up here, isn't it? And in theory, it should really help with that cloudy effect that I'm going for. Also want to dig this entire floor out to make it dark blue concrete. Although I'm, I'm not sure I fully like this. So I'm going to dig a little bit of it out. And instead, the blue will be a border of sorts. That does mean that I have to head home again to grab sand concrete that will go in the floor. As expected, this is unfortunately nowhere near as much as I need. And would you believe it? Nearly out of gravel, just one stack left. I think it's time I went out and collected some more. What's the best way to do that? Well, if I dig down right about here... I'll go straight into lava, but maybe not my best idea. But once we've locked that up and realised that there was absolutely nothing to worry about, and I do a little bit of mining along, I'll come to the ancient debris canyons. These are full of gravel, making it a great way to collect it up. 
don't know why, but for some reason, it's it's literally the world's shortest tunnel. So I'm hoping it connects to another one down here. Yep, indeed it does. With gravel scattered everywhere. That's over one shulker box worth. And whilst there is still quite a bit of gravel down here, I've got more important things to be getting on with, such as making cyan concrete, placing it down, and then changing all of this stone under here to instead be light blue concrete. Yeah, this is going to take quite a while, but it'll be worth it when it's done. That is that all done. Just discovered there's a missing sea lantern right here. I'm sure no one will notice if I just borrow it from here. That's good as new. And next I'm going to fix up all the terrain. That means grabbing a load of grass blocks and placing them down. It's actually going to require a lot more glass to be placed than I first thought. But it'll be worth it in the end. And whilst doing this, I've just discovered a sugar box full of iron blocks that I apparently completely forgot about. Plus, this is the place where the wireless redstone machine used to be. Well, that is a very nice find indeed. And I don't think this beacon is really needed anymore, especially considering with this build above it that it doesn't even work. That is all terrain completely fixed. And even though it is snowing, there's still parts like this that are under rain. So I'll fly home, grab snow, and then grab even more so that it can be placed all around the base. That should be enough snow placed. I've even got the world's rarest block right here. And it is definitely looking much much, much better. Next, I'm going to mark out the area for a build that will be a massive brewing station. Definitely way bigger and way better than this simple one I built over here. It's also going to include pearlescent frog lights, so I'll get those placed down. And the staircase down here is where the brew is going to be, because the, the brew is going to be underground because it's a massive redstone build that's, that's going to look a little bit messy. And this building's just going to be the building you come in to use it, and that's going to look really, really nice and fancy, so that's why I've got to put the actual brewing underground so that everything looks as nice as it possibly can. Due to the sheer size of this contraption, it's going to be a very very, very deep staircase. This right here is definitely low enough. Now to fly back to my house, grab purple blocks to turn them into stairs and layer them all the way down. Didn't expect that. I've, I've actually got enough. From here, a massive room is going to have to be dug out. And if you think I'm going to try that without haste, you've got another thing coming. So I'll grab the iron, build the pyramid and activate haste two. And now I can dig at a much better rate. First things first, I'm going to mine out this entire first layer, then plug up this lava, remove the dirt, drop off all the junk, grab shulker boxes, repair my pickaxe, swap my pickaxe so that I can grab lots of cobblestone to fill up these shulker boxes. And now with this plan, I'll mine out a massive room. That's mission accomplished, or at least it would be. If I didn't forget that I need to mine up a bunch of layers underneath these stairs for the underground redstone. I'm trying to be very, very careful that I don't break another pickaxe. My fortune one has sadly already been lost, but the pigman will repair this. And my pickaxe is just broken, again. So close to being done too. I, I'm just being an idiot with that, aren't I? This time I'll craft two of them and use two of these precious netherite ingots. Then buy the books, combine them, and add them to the pickaxes. I'll never get to level 1000 if I keep using up all my XP. But anyway, I'll just keep mining. And that's it. Job done. Finally, I don't have to mine another single piece of stone. All the cobble can go into storage. I'd better collect up these extra bits, and that'll all be very, very useful, as I'm soon going to need loads of pistons and also observe. Now I have three main projects ahead of me, and the first one will be the massive building for brewing. It's going to require quite a few purple items, but I've pretty much used them all up for the stairs. I have a few chorus fruit, but it's just not enough. I also have a farm all the way down here, which when harvested looks pretty cool as they all disappear, and gives me almost two stacks, plus some glow ink, I, I, I guess it's kind of useful. But even if I replenish it and wait for a bit, that, that's definitely not going to be enough for the amount that I'm going to need. So instead, I've got plan B. Go to the end, say hello to the millions of dragons all over the place. Place, fly through a gateway and then just go absolutely crazy mining the chorus fruit. It's so easy to break because the bottom one just removes everything else. And when you go around gathering them all off the ground, you end up with a decent amount. But I want more. Lots and lots more. So I'm basically not going to stop until every plant on this island has completely gone. Actually, that was a lie. I'm going to leave one lone sprout just to save Minecraft's ozone layer. Apparently this enderman is not happy with my deforestation plant. So I'll... Uh, <laughs> I'll make a swift escape. It also looks so bare behind me. I, I feel that kind of bad. I, I, I better get out of here. And whilst I'm in the end, I'm going to try a challenge that could lose my hardcore world. It requires tripwires, string, and a whole load of boats. All my items are going in this shulker box, and I mean everything. Then I take the boats and have to get across there. I shouldn't really be risking 5,000 days in hardcore like this. But here goes nothing. You can place the boat on the string. You just need to make sure there's a new boat every time. Now to do it again. Hopefully I make it to the other side. Here goes nothing. You just gotta make sure you place them early enough and don't scroll wrong. Yes! But um... 
How am I going to get back? Well, don't worry, whilst I was over there from the shulker box, I, I did get some spruce logs because I, I, I knew that there was no other escape here. And I'm, I'm not that stupid, okay, guys? Starting with a giant dome in the middle that will be made out of purple glass. I also got a lot of inspiration for this build from Adicraft. He has a futuristic series, which is very, very cool and helped me with this structure. That's the dome complete. And it's going to have a massive tube at the top going up really high. From here, I'm going to start work on another dome like this. This is going to be more of a big circular sphere. And now you're probably starting to see why I needed so much glass. This next layer is going to be a ring of iron and frog lights. And it's back to placing glass. The full sphere is complete, and now another tube up is going to be built, which will then have another massive glass sphere in it. This is the last one, I promise you. And trust me, when it's done, it will look very, very cool. It's exactly the same as the previous one in that it is the iron and frog lights around for one layer, followed by more glass. And there we go. The top is complete. Although right now it's... Um, yeah, it doesn't look very good, does it? But don't you worry about that. It will be vastly improved. However, first things first, I'm going to add respawn anchors for the interior. It's not going to be for the entire floor, as in areas like this, I want to add purple concrete with glass on top. The inside is almost complete. Just going to add a bit more to these walls. And now for the risky bit, I'm going to charge up every single one of these. It's now looking pretty cool, but if I accidentally right-click a single one, it'll blow up, so I've, I've, got, I've got to be very, very careful. This next job is kind of tedious, but I want to get all of these walls completely done. It basically just involves a load of precise mining and then filling in the gaps. All of it is now down. I think it looks kind of cool. Now to offload all this rubbish, and I'm definitely going to now need more purple concrete. Thankfully, it's super easy to craft and also convert. And with all of this, I can start building some spiraling towers, which will make it look much much better. Oh, no, hey, the snow stopped too. And there's basically going to be one on this side and another one on this side. They're both coming along nicely, but still need to go way, way higher. So I'd better get busy building. There we go. I won't be able to see the time lapse yet, but I bet that one looked pretty epic. And my, oh my, how good does this look? It leaves me with just one thing left to do to finish the building, and that is to grab string and cover the top with it. These iron things will also need covering, but I'm just going to wait for it to snow until I bother with that, because then it just makes it easier to see where you need to place stuff. I'm also going to grab a few extra items, just to add a bit of a decorational thing here, and also the same on the other side. Nice one, it just, it just gives it some decoration. I don't know if I'll actually keep it or not, but I, I think it's something extra. And I also want end rod pillars connecting the circles like this. Looking good. I also want more along here, and here as well. Now to do the same connecting these two. That is the build completely finished. And I'm very pleased with how the final product looks. Now making that building was actually the easy part. The huge brewing system down here is where it'll get complicated. But trust me, it will be amazing and it will be worth it. But before I do that, I'd like to do something slightly less complicated, but, but still not that easy. And that is to make a Pether Nautil. Whilst I do have all of these cool custom portals down here, a Pether Nautil is something that I never ended up doing. First things first, black concrete around the outside. And then in here, I want to add all the black glazed terracotta. The easiest way to make the pattern work is to place them all like that. And then you go ahead and do all the gaps, followed by turning a third time, fill in these gaps, and then complete the blanks. Next, it'll have red stained glass on top, and operation add the floor is done. In these corners, we're going to have some glowstone and a black concrete border. A red nether brick slab roof is also going to be part of it. To make a pether nautil, I have my update suppressor ready, and it's switched off. Next, I need to build a normal nether portal. That's the easy part. Turn on the suppressor and break these obsidian. Next, I have to destroy everything and build it one block higher. That lets me break more obsidian, and using water, I can Remove portal blocks and replace them with obsidian. It's looking good, I think. Now to move everything up a layer again and repeat the process. With these three obsidian, the middle is complete and I just need to remove the remaining obsidian. Mission accomplished. As you can see in the gaps of these black pillars, we're going with glowstone. And that's because on top of those, there's going to be glass. And I'm actually going to make it so that there is black concrete behind the portal blocks because it'll just make them stand out quite a bit more. On the roof, it slabs everywhere. And then the final thing will be to box in the areas behind the glass since I plan to fill it up with lava. I'll grab a couple of shulker boxes worth, plus extra sea lanterns and light blue glass. With those, I can fill in these so that with the glass in front, it makes a nice corridor. And on this section, I'm going to risk my life and place down the lava. I suppose it can barely be classed as risking my life, but hey, you, you just never know. The biggest mistake I could make is if I accidentally let some lava flow onto the portal and it broke. That would that would be the, the worst ending ever. But it didn't happen. Instead, the room of the Pether Nautil 
is complete. And I really, really like it. And the next job, which is quite an important one, is to repair up the mega base. That's mission accomplished. So I'll mine up the entire update suppressor and offload all these items. Now it's time for the monster project of the video. If I just fly over to this fancy new building and head down the stairs, in here is going to be the mother of all brewing machines, okay? It's going to be massive, filled to the brim with redstone. It's... <laughs> It's gonna be a big project. I also don't really want to be working around where there's bats everywhere. So I'll quickly activate the bat switch, which will let me work happily away without any bat interruptions. I was also gonna build a massive auto storage that was gonna be connected to the massive brewer, which is why this room was just so absolutely massive. But I've decided there's just no point in me doing that for what I need. So this massive room is way bigger than it needs to be, and I have way more items than I actually need as well for all the building, but they'll just be handy, they'll be spare items for future. So it's definitely not the end of the world. And just because it's going to be slightly smaller than I originally planned, don't think that that doesn't mean that it's going to be an absolutely crazy build. And the speed that it brews potions at is just going to be so, so fast. The redstone's coming along nicely, but I'd like a shulker box here full of glass bottles. It will have a way to restock the shulker boxes later, but it's something I definitely don't want to be in danger of running out of. Didn't quite fill the shulker box, but that's not too important. I think I've got enough. And the beauty of this machine is it'll also auto-fill all your glass bottles to have water in them. So the storage is way more compact. I've also maybe put this in a little bit early because now it's, it's emptying it out and, and doing all of that. As you can see, it's, it's not a particularly complicated build. Just a load of hoppers, droppers, and, and, and everything else under the sun. Anyway, I'm going to get the brunes stands down and they're just going to staircase upwards like this. So the next set of brain stands will be somewhere up here. But before I can add those, there's loads more redstone to be added. I can also begin work on the platform that I'm actually going to be standing on, which is probably the least complicated part out of everything. It's always nice to do a bit of building that isn't complicated and it's nice and easy to understand. Needless to say, I have not designed this entire redstone contraption. It's, it's a little bit too complicated for me. It's by Andrews Tech MC and I will link it in the description because it is definitely, definitely worth building. I'm also getting sick of all these bats flying around. Because I opened and closed my world, the chunk loader turned off so the bat switch is no longer loaded. But if I fly on over there, I can activate the chunk loader and work in a bat-free environment. At least until I reload my world anyway. That's this platform complete. So now I can get back to doing a redstone. Even more brewing stands can go along here. And now you probably get what I mean by the whole staircase thing. There's going to be more up here at some point. An interesting mechanic that this uses is that the composters kind of have to have a little bit of stuff in them. And that gives out a different signal. Just a cool extra thing that I thought I'd tell you about. It's also time that I added a few minecart chests around. So there is going to be one in there. Plus loads of them at this end here. So the fully brewed potions will be shot out of those dispensers into this t uh, water tube. And then they will be set all the way across here. And into these hoppers where they will quickly, very, very quickly fill a shulker box here. I also need even more minecart chests. I thought I'd only need about six or seven, but it's working out then I need a lot more than that. Because they have to keep being stacked up along here. And the easiest way to place them down is just to have blocks like that. These on top. Then place those. Break it all. And mission accomplished. Now to continue building up even more redstone. The contraption is absolutely massive and it's, it's still quite a bit to go. Just a little progress update. As you can see, it is all coming together. The redstone is coming along nicely because there's so many different ingredients and items and combinations for brewing. That's why it's, uh, it's had to have so many different like roads for stuff and... Yeah, pretty complex and make sure that as many brewing stands can be filled as quick as possible because we don't want a slow one, we want a super, super fast brewing system. Finally, the bulk of the redstone is done and I can start adding the chests which will hold shulker boxes full of the ingredients. I can also make a platform to stand on out of slabs right here and I can label up every single one of these chests. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the entire thing completed. Took quite a bit of messing about, but I think I have got it working now. Basically did have to manually put full shulker boxes into the slots and add like blaze powder to certain areas and all sorts and, and certain water bottles and stuff. But yeah, it, it's now complete. This is the fastest potion brewer in Minecraft. It has 60 brewing stands, a load of redstone, and lets you select any combination. I'm going to flick this lever, press this button, and start a timer to see how long it takes this barrel to fill with shulker boxes. The way the items get distributed is pretty cool, and the speed it makes these healing pods is insane. And in 11 minutes and 15 seconds, we have got an entire barrel's worth. I may never need to use a brewing stand ever again. Now I'm going to say something that sounds completely ridiculous, considering I'm in a world that I've been in for over 5,000 days, but I'm always running out of wheat. I feel like I need to build a massive wheat farm so I don't have that problem again. I did have my Tower of Slavery, but something happened to all these villagers and the... 
they're no longer with us working away. And they would only get me bread anyway, not really wheat. I mean, I know there is some wheat in here, but that's because I modified the bottom until that guy got stuck in the glass. It's just a mess. So I'm going to stop using villagers as slaves and instead... Just do the work myself. I reckon the place to build it should be right around here. It's already a fairly flat area, which is very handy. The storage is going to be there. And hoppers are going to run into it. Plus hoppers will run along this way too. From here, I need my trusty dirt. I'm also going to remove the hoppers, add glass. And I end up with something that looks like this. The next plan is to have pistons. Actually, I've changed my mind about how they are. Instead, I'll put glass here and pistons pointing downwards. The reasoning behind that is just so that it's easier to activate them. Because now all I have to do is have concrete next to them and redstone dust along here. And they should all extend. And now my plan is to place loads of these in a row. Keep adding redstone till it runs out of power, which is right about there. So give it another repeater, more redstone, and pistons can be added all the way along. From there, I shall extend out the dirt so that these platforms are now much wider. Next, I'll run this glass all the way along and place it as a border so that the water doesn't drip out. And then quite an important bit is needed along here. In fact, so important that I forgot to make a space for it. And that is the water. Without it, tilling the ground would not be very successful. Also, you can tell I completely forgot about it because this entire build is now a little bit skew if Instead of the repeater being here, it should be here where there's no piston. And this glass should also be removed to make this whole platform a couple of blocks wider. You know, I'm starting to think that just using the villagers as slaves is, is much, much easier than what I'm doing right now. But I suppose I can't keep doing that forever, so th there's no time like the present to do my own manual wheat farming. Now, before I actually do any more of this build, I just want to double check it actually works and the water flows. So I've tilled the ground, set it all up. If I break this torch, it should all open up. Come on, be satisfying. Go all the way. Stop just before the hoppers. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's working perfectly. Then to shut it off, the pistons go in. Oh, it's fantastic. So that means I can safely till this ground. I've never got so much use out of a hoe before. <laughs> and also add in the water behind here. So there will need to be more hoppers along here. And I'm basically going to take these two modules that I've got right there and remake them along here so that there's four of them. Although I'm starting to think that you didn't need me to tell you that two plus two is four. I'm sure you could work that one out on your own. But yeah, the plan with this is to make it so big and have so much wheat grow that once I plant it and harvest it once, I'll never have need to replant it again because I, f I just feel like the replanting thing is going to be what takes the longest. I always break ice to turn it into water because it's a bit more compact than carrying loads of water buckets. But would you believe it? I ran out of ice. Or did I? Well, you see, that's the beauty of building this farm right next to the ice farm. Because I can get lots more ice very, very fast. In fact, I got a lot more than I'm ever going to need or could ever carry. And with that, the water adding can resume. And so can the hoe using as well. And once I've added all the water in behind the pistons and tested everything to make sure it properly works, you'd think that the farm would be completely finished. But oh no. Last episode, I built this massive over-the-top system for brewing. So when it comes to building a wheat farm, I'm also going to build a massive over-the-top system for that. That's one farmland section done. One long line of concrete will go all the way across. And then the pistons plus the redstone can be added in. I have also created one fairly major problem with the farm in adding an extra layer. And that is that under here, it's going to start to get dark. The only question is, will it be too dark to be able to plant down seeds in every position? Position. It doesn't look like it, you know. It looks like it might just be light enough. And so now with all of the technicalities out of the way, I'm going to build this farm up a few more layers. I've made a pretty good amount of progress. So now that I can finish adding the water in here without having to worry about it freezing over, I can then take out my hoe and till all the ground. Although I'll probably do that bit last because I, I want to get all the water and pistons and redstone in first. Otherwise, something like that would happen and I'd, I'd end up jumping down, trampling it. Just for safety purposes, I'll do it at the end. You know, the good thing I always think about building a machine like this is at the moment I'll be planting wheat in it and that'll be great. But eventually, I can do other crops like potatoes, carrots, beetroot. Like, it's, it's not a, a, a one type farm, is it? So if I ever need 7 million carrots, <laughs> I know where to come. The final bit for this top layer is just to get the final bits of ice in, test it to make sure that it works, and then till every single bit of the ground. Fantastic! There will need to be a bit of redstone along here as well, so that I'll have some way to control the farm, although to do that, I'm gonna need a lever. Otherwise, it'll be very, very hard to control the farm. Perfect! Everything's successfully rigged up. I don't want to use it, though, because, you know, this wheat is still growing at the moment. Instead, I'll fly up to the top and begin the giant wheat planting process. Already ran out of seeds, not even done the first layer. But thankfully, I, I do have an older wheat farm. It's not it's not like that one, and it's not one of those ones. It's a wheat farm that is not there. That's, that's where the turtles live. It's a, as I was saying, 
mean, it's a wheat farm that would ordinarily use bone meal. So there is some seeds in that, but not very many, all things considered. That's my bones chest, as you can see, plenty in there. Maybe down here. There's some sort of save. Yeah, there's, there's a quite a bit of seedlings there. So once I run out of all of these, that'll be it. Not a massive worry, though, because the farm does produce seeds when you use it. So eventually I'll be able to fill it all up. How much of this one I'll be able to do, I'm not entirely sure. Now seeding up layer number two can begin. And ah, now apparently these can't be planted because it's too dark. Thankfully, it's nothing that a few torches won't fix. Layer number two is complete. And also the third. And I can't do these final few bits because I have run out of seeds. But if you ask me, that's a job well done. Now, for the next thing that I want to get done, as I said earlier, the downgrade in last episode removed some of my advancements. Why a complete catalog was one of those, I have no idea. That makes no sense. They didn't add any cats in 1.19. That's actually really annoying. <laughs> now, this could be the first candidate. I also hope they don't mind. I'm, uh... I'm gonna find it. Yep, you sir, I'm gonna sleep in your bed. I, I know you don't mind. Also, for those of you looking at the bottom left hand corner, I know it's really, really small and it says you have no home bed or charge respawn anchor. A lot of people always say, oh, he died. No, I, I just, I went to the end and, and didn't have a spawn point when I came back. Okay, just, just thought I wanted to squash that, that possible comment. You can tell I've been doing hardcore videos for a long time because I, <laughs> I always get comments like that. Anyway, I'm not here for that. I'm here for you. I also absolutely hate taming cats because they're, they're just annoying half the time. Like, these, this one's been good, you know? It's come up to me. And, and you can, you've done it. Well done. But some of them just won't stand still and are just constantly running away from you. So you get close enough so they'll turn. And then, yeah, they just, just, just come on. I've, I've got fish. That's it. Uh, what? You can't even turn your head or they run away. Finally. Have the fish. There we go. Job done. Two down. Nine to go. And it looks like Spruce Villages are going to be the main thing on the menu. Although, ruin portal down there. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I always like to check them. You just never know. But usually you just end up with rubbish, which is why I break the chest, so I, I don't make that mistake again. And now I'll see if I can find a cat on this floating island. What the heck? Imagine if you lived in this village. It's literally impossible to visit your neighbours that live over there. Although maybe that's a good thing. If you fall off, then uh, you're never getting back up. And for some reason, all the pathways are in the water. Hey, but you know what? In pushing that guy off, at the very least, he can go now and explore the rest of the world. So that's that's good news for you, mate. And I need to focus back on what I'm meant to be doing. Hello, cats. Oh, come on. At the very least, there's two new ones that I can tame. Which means I'm up to four out of 11. And the search continues for a village that's crazier than that one. What the heck? I I think something is... I, I think downgrading my world maybe did have some bad effects. I think the seed has changed. And now I'm coming to new chunks, or maybe these are ones I've already been to. Yeah, my world is more broken than you think. That would also explain why there was a hole in the bedrock in the nether. Everything has consequences. If I want to downgrade, that's that's what can happen. But hey, it was still worth it. I got to make a cool feather knot also. That was good enough for me. And we've got a desert village. Perfect. Hey, I could sleep in another villager's bed. I, I don't know why I'm making a habit of this or boasting about it. Although you don't look to be using it, so I, I guess I will instead. Now, the real question is... Have you guys got any cats? You have. I'm sure I've tamed both of those, but I'm. I, then again, I'm not sure. This one, I, I don't quite remember. It was a new one. And I think this might be a new one as well. Six out of 11. Perfect. Or an unhealthy habit, I'll, I'll let you guys decide. Nice. It's a brand new cat. In fact, make that two new cats. So there's three to go. Make that two to go. And now only one remains, which I think is the one that you only find at Swamp Huts. I could be wrong if that's still the case or whether you can now find them in villages. Just looked into it by checking my advancements file and the one I'm missing is the red cat. I can't believe I forgot about it. It's like the one of the ones that's been in Minecraft for the longest. So both the cats that I've got here are not the, wrong, the ones I want. But hey, it's going dark. You know what that means. Just scooch over a tad, thank you. I'm, I'm gonna get some sleep. I get back to the traveling. Aha, red cat spotted. Now to tame him. No, come on, accept the fish. We're gonna have this away where you just run really, really far away and I chase you. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a complete catalog. And I would like to take this moment to ask a question that I think we've all been wondering. Why are there 11 different types of cats and yet there's only one type of wolf? What kind of discrimination? Obviously, Mo Yang are cat people. They don't like dogs. I think it's unacceptable. There should be 11 different types of dogs as well. It'd be amazing. Oh, well, hopefully they change it one day. And now the real question is, can I get home before my elytra break? I really, really hope so. I've just about made it back. Just in time to drop everything off. Get some sleep. Although, hang on a minute. There's a tradition here now. How many nights in a row can I do it? where I sleep in a villager's bed. I guess today we're gonna find out. So with the complete catalog advancement, I now have every single one. And my next project is to complete the squid switch. This was a project that got stalled due to my inability to brew enough healing pots to keep the squids alive. But last episode, I built a ridiculously fast brewer 
So now I'm going to first get my Elytra. Oh my goodness, they are very nearly broken. So yeah, I'm going to get them repaired. Managed to get a few extra levels out of that as well. Now to head to the brewing place. As you can see over here, I have a barrel. So I built all this last episode, brewed all these. Look at them. Absolutely full to the brim. So everything we need, we will take right there. Also, somebody commented saying, how am I walking on air or flying or something? It's, it's, it's grey stained glass, guys. So this is the dark room that the squid will spawn, and then I'll throw snowballs at them to send them through the portal. I do want to make a little modification, though, so that it works even better. It's going to be pretty simple, involving redstone and pistons. And it's basically just going to involve me mining out the roof, adding a row of sticky pistons that has redstone on top. I'll connect the wiring like this. It, it doesn't really need to look nice. It just, it just needs to work. And the exact same thing should be along here. The same redstone, because it's above the obsidian, is powering both sides. Then just some extra tinted glass there, and the gap's filled in. Means that this will now be completely pitch black, but I can control it... I was finding, because I only had the bottom one that was moving up and down, that the glow squid were getting stuck on the top glass. Now, that will no longer be an issue. And I think I'm ready to set the glow squid switch up. Once I click this, healing pots are going to be constantly dispensed from all of those. And that's when I've got to get through the portal as quick as I can. As soon as any squid gets sent through and, and the chunks are loaded, then the squids will be kept alive. So I'll head on up to this AFK platform, which will allow glow squids to spawn below. Then I swoop on down, flick this lever, and throw snowballs at them, which will get them to all go through the portal. If I can get them to go at a similar time, that's good. Because once they go through, the chunks will be loaded for 15 seconds, and that's when they can be taking damage. Since there's only one on that side, I'm going to leave him until there's more, because it's, it's best to send as many few in one go to avoid using too many healing pots. I mean, I've got loads, so I'm hoping I should be fine. But in my books, <laughs> you can never be too careful. Is there any more here? Well, this is a bit of a let down this is absolutely none on this attempt there is a few more so through you go and you only need eight in total for the squid switch to work perfectly so a couple more times with this and it'll be ready this time i've got loads through you go come on have i run out of snowballs no i've got more forgot to flick the lever though didn't i <laughs> no wonder they can't go through Come on, guys. Although they're all in position, which is uh, a good thing. One more batch and I'll be done. I should do it. Just sent through another four. And now it has to be noted that I can never come back here again. If I do and load these chunks, all the glow squids will die. So I'll say goodbye to this area. Head through this portal. And this is where I've got to act fast, okay? I can hear the healing pots going off, which means there's still some left. The squids are still alive, which is good news. Uh, the, the, as they're taking damage, they're getting healed quickly. They're going to get pushed through. Don't escape, squids. What's going on, guys? Just a glitch. It's all right. And I've got to wait for the portal cooldown, which is going to be 30 seconds. But they're still staying alive from the healing pots. It's unbelievable. And the timing's up. They get pushed through. The squid switch is done. I can turn that off. And would you believe it? I've still got absolutely loads of them left. Yeah, the brewing machine was overkill, and, and, and that was all overkill as well. But I've done it. Took me a few hundred days to properly sort it, but I have completed the squid switch. Definitely can't go home through that portal. I believe I also need to turn on the chunk loader. And that'll send a minecart through all the time. So now my bat switch is loaded and my glow squid switch is loaded. But you may be wondering why. Why did I want to disable the spawning of bats and of glow squid? Well, it's pretty simple. It was actually all part of my plan to make finding notch apples easier. And by that I mean it's going to help me find more ancient cities without actually having to dig down. I'll know if there's one underneath me. You see, if I find a biome that's fairly mountainous, now this, this one's not that great, but it's, it's a good example. And I then look downwards, you can see there's not many entities. Maybe there's a few in this direction, but basically I've got to look with the lowest FOV. And if I see a load of entities underground, then I'll know it's an ancient city. Because ancient cities have loads and loads of chests in them. Now this is more of the kind of area where you're likely to find an ancient city, but this method will allow me to say for sure whether there is one. Doesn't look like there is because there's basically no entities below me. I've tried this mountain as well, although the results could be messed up because there's a lush cave below me and I haven't built an axolotl or, or a tropical fish uh, switch, so it might it might mess up my results. Still nothing again. Let's see if this one's going to be any better. And there does seem to be quite a bit in like that direction. Let me head across with this uh, <laughs> this terrible FOV. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all kind of below me right now. So by my calculations, if I dig down right around here, it worked! I fell into one! It's fantastic! Now, I probably won't hang around and loot it, just from the fact that I haven't got the Warden Disabler on. Oh my god, are you kidding me? First chest, I just thought I'll just check this chest, just to see. Oh well, quick while you're ahead, do we just go for it? Alright, Wardens can spawn, but you know what? I'll, I'll search for as much as I can. Although, trying to loot these with the darkness effect is an absolute pain, so I, I don't even know if I can be bothered. It's just proof of concept, guys, that it helps me to know where to dig down, because this wasn't actually underneath the mountain, it was next to the mountain. So... You know, it's just it's just my new Notch Apple helpful method. Because now there are no bats, there are no squ glow squids, there are no mobs or anything to take up the entity counter. So if I see entities underground, I know it's either chests or 
mob spawners from a mineshaft or axolotls or something. So it's probably chests. And the only place with loads of chests underground are either an ancient city or a stronghold. Hey, we're at the old perimeter. Since we're in the area, I might as well chill here and <laughs> collect a load more gold. I'm sure it'll always come in handy for me. That's a very healthy boost, nearly four stacks of blocks. It's also always a happy moment when I can add another notch apple to the collection. It seems that the wheat at the bottom has pretty much all grown. So in order to have enough seeds for everything else, I, th I think I'm going to give it a little harvest. And it seems that these ones here are failing to grow because there just wasn't enough light for them. I, I guess because there was when I planted it, but then as I built the farm, the light got less and less. So that, uh, that made them just stunt their growth. Got me a lot of seeds, hopefully enough, to replant everything. Just realised as well, I should be using fortune to harvest it when I'm doing this, because that, that gets me more seeds. I'm just forgetting all of Minecraft's basic mechanics. Every single one is placed. It had, a, well, 30 seeds to spare. I thought it might be slightly more than that, but, but never mind. Now there's a few in here as well. Now to leave it to continue to grow and get some sleep. Now since I'm going to be allowing myself to use TNT duping for farms, and since I have completely run out of dirt, a massive dirt farm is next on the agenda. But I do also the issue and I don't know why but all my bees have despawned died whatever's happened they're no longer with me so this farm is, is not really working it's got two honey bottles in it at the moment that's that's my last my last honey after everything I can hear the bees so I, I don't know where they are it's, it's just really weird and absolutely loads of honey blocks are going to be needed to build the dirt farm at the moment I've got three stacks I need about 10. So a honey farm is what I'm going to do. But such a farm will require loads more bees. So I'm going out in search of some nests. I always feel like spotting a bee. What the heck? Why have pandas spawned in a forest? This is bizarre. I think downgrading my world has had more seed problems than I realized. As I was saying before I saw that very strange thing. <laughs> I'm finding beehives. Is, uh, is pretty difficult in forests like this because they're very obscure to see. And each tree has a much lower chance of finding one. Whereas if I go over into a plains biome, there's a much higher chance. I see, I found them straight away here. I'm going to breed you guys. Although apparently there's bees everywhere. Wait, wait, is there more than one beehive? Is there one over there? Okay, well I have a choice to make. I can either leave the baby bee on its own out here because I've, I've got too many for this hive. Or, I don't uh, know, uh, it's too late. Can you get in? No! What have I done? Oh well, I'm sure you can find a new home. You, uh, you've, you've got to live without any... Oh, what have I done? I would like to know, where on earth am I? Why is there a massive scaffolding tower here? Did I did I build this? Why would I make this? Scaffolding tower to Skylum? I don't know. What is happening in my world? Found more bees, and I've got an idea on how I can save the baby bee. There's the hive. Is everybody in? In that case, I'll pick it up. And if I fly back to where I found that first hive, the baby bee is still here. Come on, get, get into this. This is your new home now. There we go. Alrighty, he's no longer going to be left behind. Glad to have that crisis averted. I'm kind of scared to fly around my world anymore in case I find weird things. Like, I, 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 look, is this a, is this a bit of a, a seed bot? No, I think that's just normal. And we've got hive number three and hive number four. Pretty cool indeed. I wonder if the much more common. Oh, you guys, great. But I think there must be much more common in flower forests because I am finding them everywhere. I've also enabled a mini hood tweak that just lets me see how many bees are inside each nest, which is. It's so much better. So you can see here, two bees, one baby, two bees, one bee, three bees, three bees. Just makes life way better. For example, now that I know I've got a wandering bee that needs a home, I can place this one that only has one in. And now we can live there. And now that I'm back, bee farm building can begin. Out of curiosity, I can actually see if there's any bees in any of these. So that's T0 bees. What about all the rest? I can, because I can hear them. So you never know. Also, apparently things are getting stuck in these. Oh, we've got loads more honeycomb. No, that's handy. And every single one is empty except that one. And that one. There actually turned out to be four that had them had in, which is, uh, is good. And to make this, I'm going to need hoppers, droppers, and dispensers. Now, to build such a farm, I'm not going to build it in this little honey place. I think it makes much more sense to instead build it at spawn, so the farm is always working, no matter what. I feel like having it in the mega base could be a cool idea, like down this corridor. It'll actually just be the storage system, which you see at the end of this corridor, which actually would make sense if I just build it a little bit further forward, and then it is part of the next chunk. Next, I'm taking my pickaxe and going to mine out this entire Chunk. It's nice and light down here thanks to all these sea lanterns as well. I also think I'll keep all this stone and drop it off at my storage too. Since it gives me a good excuse to use the feather nozzle. I'm starting with the storage system so that I know where that is and then I can have all of the farm above it in the right place. The grass blocks are in so now it's time to place all the flowers. It's just such a satisfying farm to build because it just keeps repeating. The next thing I'm missing is the bees. That's, that's kind of an important part of the farm isn't it? And until all these babies have grown up and I have 192 bees at my disposal, no more progress on the honey farm can be made. And for all those bees, 64 beehives are needed, which will be the home for all of these guys' babies 
but I can't start doing that until the babies in here have grown up. In the meantime, I can make this passageway look a lot better. I would make it wider and taller like that one, but then it would start to mess with the, the redstone and the space and stuff, so I'll keep it narrow. I have yellow concrete as the floor, and then from this shulker box, I can make honeycomb as part of the wall. Right here, I want a redstone lamp, because this is going to be the very block that turns the farm on and off. I'll put yellow concrete behind here, and eventually, there'll be honey blocks in front, but I, I need to get the honey to actually be able to do that. But now, the question is, will I be able to craft enough honeycomb blocks to build this? I kind of used them all up on making the beehives, didn't I? Thankfully, honey blocks themselves are not that hard for me. And a redstone lamp is pretty easy to craft. A lamp there with honey like so. Because there has to be a grass block there for the, for the flower. I'm going to just cover it up with glowstone. I think that's a good idea. Then use more honeycomb for the roof. The final bit of glowstone to hide the dispenser. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it done? Although I'm just going to tweak something. Yeah, I think glowstone all the way along makes, makes this bit make a bit more sense. So it's time to do the redstone. Well, some of it anyway. The, the, all of the redstone in there is going to need beehives before I can, can get on with that. It's a very simple one. It's just basically a, a comparative fader clock that goes like that. And as you can see, every three seconds or so, it sends a pulse. A pulse that must connect to this dispenser. Finally, there just needs to be a torch. When the lamp is off, the dispensers are off. Now, how are my bees getting on? It looks to me like they've all grown up. These ones are not flapping their wings very much, are you? So in that case, we can begin phase... Okay, I'm going to stop with the bee puns, but we can, we can start phase two. And that is to remove this glass, give them some flowers to get excited about, and add walls. Apparently, I've run out of stone bricks, so we're on black stone now. I then need slabs along here so that nothing will escape. I'll breed a bunch of these. And because only the babies can escape, they will go out there. And I can place a beehive for them to all go into. So far, I've filled two. I, I can see this taking a little bit of time. But as they fill up, I can add them to the farm and I don't have to worry about them escaping because the bees can't come out until I remove the temporary blocks. So it's two down, 62 to go. I'm gonna be busy as a bee. Okay, no, I said I wouldn't do any more bee jokes. All right, never mind. Let's just let's just give them the flowers that they want. I've nearly filled up every single one that needs to be. Just a few straggler hives that need filling up, so I'll just keep breeding away. And in the meantime, I can take all these and continue placing them in the farm. I can't believe it's taken me this long to build something as useful as a honey farm. And I do also want to say that this honey farm is by one of the best farm builders out there, Ian X04. I just love some of the creations that he makes. And now every single single one has finally been filled. I've placed some spares along so I can get spare bees because these are all my old beehives and bees nests. And once they're all placed in, I can begin operation at the redstone. Every single beehive is going to have a repeater on top, which is why I had to wait until I got all the bees before I could do this bit of redstone. Now it's time for the fun bit where I get to break these and loads of bees, I think six into each area will appear. Maybe best doing this at an angle so I don't accidentally break the block underneath. Just listen to this noise, guys. Just the way they all pop out. I love it. It's so good. The bees will now be working away, getting me honey. Now I need to sort out this item filter, which requires honey bottles. I have a very small amount, which is all I'm going to need. And I think in this chest, yep, I keep blockers, so they'll be perfect for the item filters. Also, the last bee farm I made wasn't very efficient, so it just required thousands of glass bottles to make it work. So that then means that I have thousands of glass bottles in these chests, which is more than enough for what I'm going to need for this new farm, because technically it barely needs any bottles at all. That's the item filter done. The system that adds new glass bottles is also pretty straightforward. It can only, you see, add a new glass bottle when one gets used up, otherwise the system would just get overfilled. So to do that, we'll have a dropper, which is every time an item leaves, this chest will power, and then it will power this dropper, and then we're just going to go and have that into there with a couple of chests on top filled with loads of glass bottles six stacks in here will just get the farm going and would you believe it the farm is now done and can be switched on it's working look at that the honey's starting to flow in so i found out that four is enough for it to work which is is perfect so it's it's job done ladies and gentlemen that farm's just going to keep working the honey is now going to come in very fast like 800 per hour 825 to be precise and as i said because i built it in spawn chunks it will always be working in the background. All of that just so that I can easily build a dirt farm. Can you believe it? So it's time to get to... Oh, there's a flipping ravine under there. I forgot about that. Doesn't really matter because I can, I can just put stone underneath. And this is the shape that needs to be dug out. Now to add a few slabs and waterlog them. This will just cause all of the items to flow to the correct place. Now I've got to dig out a hole. It's a bit annoying because the, the hole should be 3D. But due to me choosing to build this in the one place where there's a ravine, means I've got to manually add all of the floor in. But hey... Storing all this cobblestone is going to require the space, so I, I can't complain. You're probably starting to see how it's going to work, so any items will flow. You know what? I'll show you how it works. They go in there, they flow, and then if this hopper was full, for example, it would then flow to the next one. It just means it's, it's a bigger storage than normal. Now I can start adding the leaf blocks. Now for the very long task of waterlogging every single leaf. Now for the cool part, adding the lava. You go like that and just watch. Oh, it makes cobblestone. You can break that underneath. 
And as that drops, it'll make even more cobble... No, it won't make... Yeah, it will make cobblestone. I knew it would. <laughs> now to add even more lava. And then I'll repeat it all the way around. That's now job done. I can finally sleep to get rid of this awful snow that's getting in the way. Next, we need a bit of obsidian right there. Leaves around it. And you guessed it. They need waterlog. And that'll protect them. It's just... It's got to go all the way back down here. Or at least I don't go, I have to go all the way, technically. I can just do it from standing up there. Oh my goodness, they're on fire. They're burning. All right, well, we got, <laughs> we got to get a move on. I'm pretty sure they won't actually burn away. Like, yes, fire could be set next to them, but I don't think they'll disappear. I, I think the water should technically save them, but who knows? Right now, I'm just doing all the redstone components. With all the redstone done, I am ready to finally place the TNT. This is going to be the on-off switch. So flicking that will turn it off. We can also hear some TNT. I don't think it'll mess anything up, but just in case, I am going to remove... A bit of snow on there because it shouldn't be there. Any ice that was once here is now gone. So I'm going to switch it on. Press the button once, which will just set off the repeaters, as you can see. And set off the TNT. And the TNT will blow up all of the cobblestone. And the cobblestone, it'll just basically blow up the cobblestone just as it regens. And the cobblestone will be coming down here, filling the hoppers. Okay, we'll have those grass blocks back, thank you. And it'll be getting me 75,000 cobblestone per hour. And it'll be working all the time because it's at spawn, so I'll never have to go mining ever again. I think I'm just going to go all out with the spruce and get more than I need. Even though the dirt farm is going to get me some, maybe, yeah, maybe I'd, uh, it's a waste of time. But this could be the final time that I ever use this farm, so it deserves a proper send-off. All that wood is going to be getting mined. Finally, it's all gone. We've got a massive shulker box full. And I can get back to collecting all the needed resources. All items have successfully been collected. So it's time to get it built. Although before I do that, I might want to repair my tools and my elytra. Just so they don't break during the project. There we go. The plan is going to be to build it up in the sky, so that then I'll have space to build a blast chamber underneath it. But we'll harvest all the blocks for me. I'm going to start right here with a machine that is going to generate stone, which will then be turned into moss. From there, spruce trees can be grown on the moss, turn it to podzol, which can become dirt. I'll first fill every single one of these with water, and then place waterlogged campfires inside. I bet you didn't even know that was a thing, did you? Okay, don't turn to ice, please. That's going to stop it turning to ice when they're in there. From there, I can start filling the trenches with lava, which makes the stone generator complete. And I'm also going to need a little bit of redstone over here. This is going to be the output for the podzol, and it's going to make these pistons move. And as you can see, it's all going to converge and go into one line like this. The machine is starting to take shape, but as I knew I probably would, I've forgotten something. That, that there should be a wall right here. I need over 100 of them, actually, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going home to get them all. Going to make them out of black stone, and then they can be stacked up right here. There's going to be a bunch of packed ice all the way along here for transporting items, because anything that this farm produces that can't be used is going to be turned back into bone meal to make it super efficient. So things like saplings from leaves that are spare and stuff from the moss conversion will get reused to make it as efficient as possible. Now to start adding the water so things can get flowing. And it goes all the way around to these bubble columns that will also need to be filled with water, which might take some time considering there's four of them. This is why I needed so many observers that they are all going to detect updates from the rails and then power the pistons above. Guys, I made a slight mistake whilst building and now I, I, I can't get out of it no matter what I do. Okay, well, I made it. Oh, no, wait, I'm back in. This water must be removed and hopefully doing this yet. Yeah, okay, it should calm some of it down, but it's still going a bit crazy. Nice to stop everything going crazy. Basically, an endless loop was created between these observes and the thing, so I just removed those blocks in it. It solved the problem. Now to actually place the glass down this time. Just curious, how is me honey for- Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a code red. The system has backed up. I knew I should have made a shulker loader for it. I've got too much honey. Repeat. <laughs> I've got too much honey. The machine is so well made that nothing broke. It's it's just all absolutely fine. So I guess any extra honey would just keep on going round because it couldn't fit in the system, which is pretty impressive. And whilst I'm doing the farm run, might as well go and see how the old cobblestone farm's doing. Pretty solid. Quite a few... Oh, okay, well, yeah, we're... Whoa, 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 whoa. That's way too much cobble. Time to switch this, <laughs> this thing off. Anyway, now I'm going to get back to building. And back to placing water without destroying the entire machine. I also forgot to bring another very important item. The glazed terracotta. I've, I've left it in the furnaces. So I'm going to offload everything into this chest. And I can use the opportunity to nip home and get loads of bone meal as well. Because the machine, whilst very efficient does use a lot of it. The good thing about that, however, is that I have a massive EOL farm that has got me a ridiculous amount of bones. So fill the machine with all of that should not be a problem. Might as well also convert the extra honey and take him back to my house. Also, here's the much needed glazed terracotta, which will allow me to continue the build. It is almost, almost, almost complete. Just need some lava in there. 
No, not there. <laughs> Inside the cauldron. And I also need to set up item filters, and these are going to be the bits that make the bone meal. So any item that the farm can produce, as you'll see, all the things like saplings and stuff like that will be made. And then they go into here, and some of them are becoming compost under there. The sticks, however, will just go through into the lava in that cauldron. So it's very, very renewable indeed. I also need to add the final borders for the final water stream. Now to also get the water itself in. And both of these need to be filled all the way to the top with water. And unfortunately, I don't quite have enough ice for that. So I'll have to pop home to top up. Now let's get this filled up. And I want to grab a fortune pickaxe. Because otherwise, it would just take me six million years to mine them all. These other two water columns also need filling. And now the final thing to be built is a massive slab roof. There we go. We'll also begin the mass crafting spree of bone meal and these will all be put into this chest right here where they'll end up in this dispenser so i want enough to fill up this dispenser this hopper and some of this chest but to do that i'm, I'm probably gonna have to craft a load more shulker boxes i've decided that all of these are gonna be enough buying them all is pretty unnecessary but i don't know i just feel like for ocd purposes i have to do it all of them can go there and the final one can actually go into the machine where this hopper will be taking the bone meal out and starting to put it into the droppers now. They won't move until the redstone starts though. And the farm is pretty much complete. The very final thing the farm needs is, is not for me to fall down there. But that's to be a boat place right there. That's aligned with the blocks behind me. And has blocks pushed into it. The only way I could think to do it was using observers. But basically the only bit of redstone items I had left. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty thin on the ground for things like uh, redstone blocks. But then to use the farm I would just take the saplings out of there. And then place them. I, I'd look there and I'd keep getting moved around and, and place them. However, there is there is one small extra issue with the farm. Also, if you're wondering why this day was so quick, I had to spend quite a bit of time just making sure everything was correct. And, and uh, there was one or two fixes where water had turned to ice. So I had to fix that. But yeah, why, why isn't it ready? Why can't I just go straight out and use it now? Well, blocks are going to get pushed out of here extremely, extremely fast. And then from here, they're going to get pushed downwards. And once that piston reaches the push limit then the whole machine will jam and the whole machine will break. So whilst this farm will produce loads and loads of dirt, uh, in order to get the dirt, I need to create a blast chamber, which is a whole nother big project to make a really efficient one that will not break and can keep up with this farm. And guys, as you can see, the sun has set. So that was 5,400 days in hardcore Minecraft. Next, I'm turning off the mob switch, which, yep, that is now switched off. And I'm going to get more pillager captains into this machine. I'm down to my last three, and, you know, I want more than that. Pretty straightforward to do. I just simply chill at the top of here, and down below, pillager captains will spawn, and then they will get pushed down by the water into this little cage. Although you're not a captain, so, um, sorry, mate. Yeah, but you're off the menu. So I'll wait a little bit longer and hopefully get what I'm looking for. All right, let's see. What's the haul? It's okay. I have also realized, I mean, there's no captains down here, but I'm meant to have the minecarts move in when they come down, just in case some of them want to despawn. Let's go see how things are looking this time. Oh, much better. Look at that. We have got captains everywhere. So I'll get rid of you. You're an imposter. In fact, I think I just have to do that. And then, oh, I need, I need some of these as well, some rails. And then I just put a rail like this. And then you, ju you just kind of need to move along somehow. Which you guys are messing up for everybody. And then my captain sorter can be put to, to good use. Because the captains just go in that direction. All of these are useless, so I'm going to get rid of them. And then I will use the farm for another cycle. And that is one more that I've managed to obtain. Suppose it's better than none. And now, I fancy getting myself back up to level 737. It's been a while since I've been there. So I've AFK'd there to hopefully get another captain to spawn. Very good. One did. If I can just get rid of him... There we go, and it means I can now head to my Ravager XP farm, turn the farm on, shoot an arrow right here, and begin placing down TNT. And with that, I'll be able to gather up loads and loads of XP. And whilst the machine was working well and I was on good track, I've, I've now run out of TNT completely. So I'm going to collect up the remaining XP, which might get me to level 700. It actually just stopped then, so I, no, no, it won't get me that far. <laughs> then I'm going to grab the empty shulker boxes and put them into storage. Then I can put the EOL farm to good use. It just looks so cool watching them all spawn in and disappear straight away. And once enough time has passed, I can see that there's, there's a lot of enemies. For some reason, endermen now teleport out of the machine. They used to not. They used to just die, but <laughs> doesn't work like that anymore. Thankfully, I can fly 128 blocks away. Also, this is the bottom of my guardian farm. Well, that's just over there. But yeah, if I fly 128 blocks away and then try and fly back as long as I don't get lost, they've pretty much all despawned apart from a few stragglers. There's also some very OP mobs that have picked up items and so they are, they've, they've survived the fall damage and they're, they're still going so... I'm just going to get rid of all of them. There we go. That keeps everything nice and clean. I'll put that back. And somewhere down here, if I can just remember... I should have it labelled better, really. I think maybe this is Gunpowder Alley. Is this right? Yeah, there we go. Whoa, whoa I'm just trying to have a look at my stocks, mate. Get away. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry you had to witness that. Here, I've um, 
have a protect. No, you don't want it. I think I might have just murdered his father in front of him. But I'm sure it was somebody else. More importantly, I have so much gunpowder. And now I just need a desert so I can get lots and lots of TNT. I don't really know where to find a brand new one, so I'm just going to fly until I think it's a good spot and just take a guess. I'm sure this place is as good as any. Also, due to the space constraints, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not working with much infantry room at all. That is, uh, that is that. I've managed to make the portal nonetheless. And now I'm in the middle of a massive ocean. Well, not maybe not in the middle. There's a bit of land this way. Very stupidly forgot to turn the mob switch back on, didn't I? So we're going to have to be dealing with that all night. I suppose I don't have to. I could, you know, just go to sleep. And now the hunt for a desert can begin. Not going to say no to the odd ruin portal on the way. It'd have to be something very good, though, for me to, you know, give up some of these for the, the inventory space. And this looks to be a bit of an acacia biome. Sometimes you get deserts next to them, but will this be one of those times? Apparently the answer's no. No, it won't. Although there's golden carrots in, I always like to take them. You, you know what, I'm making, I said I would take something special to make an exception, and this, for me, is good enough. And I've done it. I've successfully found one. Complete with a ruin portal, with uh, nothing much in it. I, got, I don't have space for it, I'll just have to leave it. Well, this does look like a bit of a good spot to set up camp, so I think that's what I'll do. I'm gonna have to just start trying to get a little bit more space, so I'm gonna organize everything so it's much better. I'm going to make a double chest out of some wood. I think I'm going to need a crafting table as well. So I'll make that, plunk it down there. Then all these chunker boxes are going, oh, we have so, so much space now. And then I shall manually gather some sand, which will allow me to get the TNT reserves started. From there, I can begin placing and lighting and then continue crafting even more. I also have to make sure I get to sleep quickly because, yeah, because the mob switch isn't on. I don't want all sorts of things spawning when I'm trying to do this. That is an entire shulker box's worth, but I've still got so, so much gunpowder remaining. So I'm going to use all of it up, no matter how long the process takes me. And finally, it is done. I've got four shulker boxes worth there, a fifth one here, a little bit in there. And a bunch of sand somewhere around it. Yeah, loads of sand as well that's spare, just, just in case. So I'll gather every single one of these up, and I can make a portal to get home a lot faster. And you might be able to tell, it took me so long getting all that TNT that, uh, yeah, it made my hair's a lot shorter now. <laughs> Even had a haircut in between. Oh, that's not too important. The important thing is, how on earth do I get out of here? I'm just in a massive cave. Wait, there's a gap here. Okay, it's just more cave. No, wait, it's not more cave. It opens up. Thank goodness for that. It definitely makes things much, much easier. All the TNT ones can be added to this machine. And I can take all the rest of this back home. Because getting to level 737, we'll just have to wait. Instead, I have another project that I want to get on with, which is a fast crafting system. Basically, it means I'll put all the materials that I want for something into chests, and then they'll get dispensed to me in the right quantities, and I can craft whatever I need to. Don't really know where I should build it. I'm thinking we remove that, and we go through here. We, we, we add a new area to the chest room, because it's got to be next to the chest room, hasn't it? I still want to keep the hopper so I can put shulker boxes, but if I want items, I only really use that side anyway. I'll need some stone, but in fact, why why do that when I can just craft more and we can put them like that in the floor? And I also need to make sure I find a spot where there's definitely going to be enough space. In fact, I've decided going underground is going to be the answer. There's not really much space at this level, but if I go lower, there's loads and loads of space and my storage room won't be in the way or anything like that. This is the spot that it's going to go. I've worked out that there's enough space for it here and everything. I've just got to mine out a big enough room to build it. This is the size of the room that I need mined out, but it does need to be a little bit deeper, so <laughs> I'm going to keep digging. The entire room is dug out. One bat lives in there apparently now, and I've gathered up all the materials that I'm going to need, but, but except for one. The shroom light. Apparently, I didn't have a single shroom light. Thankfully, it won't be very difficult because I only need seven of them, which I have now got. And if you notice that the day count is 5432, I, I think it's pretty cool. I wonder if I'll ever get to 54321 as a day, but that's, that's a long, long way in the future. Also just realised I do have shroom lights, they're just in this junk overflow section, so yeah, I'll, I'll remember that for next time. And before I actually build it, I wouldn't mind just repairing my pickaxe. It's, it's uh, you know, a little bit worse for wear. Don't want it to break because then I'll have to use XP making a new one and I, I'm trying to get to level 737, not go downwards. So spending a little bit of time here repairing it and getting to level 700 sounds like a good idea. Nicely got to the amount of levels. In fact, I'm, I'm close to 701, but I can't stay there all day. I have got work to do. And I'm also going to just chuck a few things in here because I could do with a little bit extra space due to the fact that this build requires hopper minecarts. Nine of them all together to be precise, and I only have three hoppers in there, so it looks like... I should just make a load more of them, which is easy enough. I can do it with five stacks of iron, 
Get crafting. Perfect. I'm also in the iron chest. I might as well make those six minecarts as well. Seven. Seven minecarts. Apparently, I didn't make enough. All right. There's one more than what I thought I needed. Now, I've definitely got everything that I need. And building can commence. You won't be able to see this section down here, but it's going to have glass along there. A little bit more here. And then a bit of soul sand, which is just going to make a water tunnel upwards. And then I will box all of that in and place ice so that the water it can become water. Perfect. I'm then going to need my signs, which are right here. There's going to be one there. Then I could do the exact same thing like this all the way along. And because there's ice where the signs are, any items will just get pushed. And watch, they'll just float straight, up, straight along, no problem. Then this is going to be like a, yeah, a tower upwards. And it's going to basically collect all the items that are going to be evenly distributed and send them up to me where I'm be crafting. But before I can build any higher, these platforms need to be made a bit bigger. Now I've made this platform, which will make all the items converge into this middle bit. But it needs some gates down the middle just so that I can, well, I'll show you why. Because once I open all these gates, things will still be able to pass through. But it will stop the water, which is going to be along here from flowing too far. It'll, it'll stop the flow, which is all part of the plan. Same thing on this side. And I can layer this up even more. And now is the point where I can start adding all of the different redstone components. And here are the hoppers that are going to empty the chests and then it can go into the droppers, which will go into the water. And now this is where the hopper minecarts are going to come in. So they're going to be on each one. And I've got fences here for alignment purposes. So I'm going to break the rail and then I'm just going to push these in so that in theory, there we go. That's that's pretty much over. <laughs> but in theory, if I just put like 64 here, you'll see that each hopper will start collecting them, which is perfect. So then it will, in fact, I'm going to just grab them. Well, they've already emptied them. It's that fast. But then each one will be evenly distributed. So it, it'll basically empty the chest as fast as possible. Really, the only way it could be faster is if I used a a, a chest in a boat. That, that's the only way it could be any quicker, really. So my next job is to do this on every single one. There we go. That's every single one done. It's it's definitely... Oh, don't you go off course now. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely coming together. So now I'll start adding all the redstone, which will allow me to lock the hoppers whenever I need to. Plus I need a repeater there to extend it. And then along here, we can add even more. I've now pretty much done all the redstone down there I'm, I'm covering it all up i also need to put some water here i'm going to waterlog that as well using that and you probably can hear it's it's all going off at the moment that's because i i had this observer go down and it's kind of updating it but if i go ahead and do that it should yeah it should affect everything and stop it yeah perfectly and now i can place down these chests in peace this is more or less done now i'm just going to add a bit of a roof over this and then i'm going to add carpet to spawn proof things i know i have a mob switch but just in case you know i have the mob switch off because every now and again i do i'm i'm going to go ahead and yeah add carpets everywhere make sure it's fully spawn proof then nothing can go wrong famous last words i'm sure something will go wrong but um at least things are less likely to go wrong anyway. And it is now done. I, I guess if I'm going to spawn proof down here, I should also spawn proof up there. I, I don't think sign carpet will make sense. Instead, I'll grab this grey carpet, which can be placed down all over. That's job done. Now, I've, I've just got to test it. How well does it work? Does it work as intended? So many questions. I'm also just going to get eight carpets of these to go on all of these blocks. And I'm going to craft an entire shulker box worth of pistons. Such a feat will require four shulker boxes worth of cobblestone, three shulker boxes worth of planks. I hope I'm going to have enough wood for this. Also, an entire shulker box of redstone dust. And finally, one of iron. I do wonder if it makes sense for there to only be one chest on top of each. And then I'd have space just to place a shulker box. Might be quicker. I also am just going to turn the machine on. I guess I can make sure it's working because um, I want to make sure all the chests... See, how has that chest got stuck? It's it's clearly on the hopper. <laughs> no worries, I, I suppose I can pretty easily grab it. Oh, we need that one over there as well. Now, it doesn't matter which order I go ahead and place these, but I can just add one in every slot and... Hmm, that's not working, is it? I guess it's not technically over the hopper minecart, so it's not empty. Okay, well, that's good to know. Good to know that I basically shouldn't mess with the design. Instead, I should stop being lazy and just go ahead and <laughs> move them in like this. I also think it's insane. Look at the speed that it empties the chest. It's well fast. All right, that's job done. And now we can we can do the official test run. At least I will do once I've got rid of all the shulker boxes. Don't have the space in that chest. Instead, we're filling up this one. So basically, I will stand here and items are going to keep getting dispensed. And very soon, they're going to start coming into my inventory. As you can see, they're all coming really fast. From there, I can keep crafting pistons like this and, and I can just keep going over and over. And as long as I'm going faster than it supplies me, that's fine. So it shouldn't take me that long at all to craft an entire shulker box worth. I could make this faster by adding and more chests and more droppers so it supplies us like items like twice as fast. That is an idea I'm thinking of exploring, but right now, 
It's, it's still a lot faster than how it used to be in the past. And as I'm going, I can chuck the pistons out and they will go into these chests here eventually. You'll see, there we go, starting to fill it up nicely, mainly just going into that one. So I'll never have to worry, okay, I don't want to get my inventory too full, but I never have to worry about, you know, running out of space or anything. I can just keep on top of it, manually empty them out and continue crafting. Like as, as long as these bits are supplying with items, I could just keep going on forever. You can see they go up there, so they're not gonna fall down. And that's why the pistons can go into a separate area because they they, they don't clash to, uh, to the, the, where the items go. And it sounds like, and looks like I've used up every single item. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. That has to be the fastest time I've ever crafted anything. It's fantastic. I could just turn off the machine by doing that. The light goes off, there you'd go. And look at it. All filling up. <laughs> this, I love it. I absolutely love it. The only thing I think may be worth adding is on this side and maybe on that side, add nine more chests to each bit and then and add this module again so that it'll double the speed and I can craft even faster. I reckon I could triple the speed of the item dispenses and still keep up with it. But even at its current speed, that was just so much better and faster than any crafting experience I've ever had. Look at that. Beautiful. I'll be using that for things like crafting TNT, anything really that I craft loads of. Concrete powder, all that. It's it's brilliant because now, for the first time in my life, I've, I've got a full shulker box of this, of, of pistons. And definitely, once I get the dirt farm finished, which will also give me wood, I can make way more of those as well. Cobblestone, I do have a cobblestone farm. Speaking of a cobblestone farm, I should go and check on it and bring a bunch of shulker boxes to fill up with cobblestone too. I did actually have to turn this machine off because it was getting me so much cobble. Let's have a little look. Is it just... Oh, it's full to the brim. Let's let's just, yeah, get the shulker boxes out, start filling them. And I think before I use this machine again, I should probably make it a sh have a shulker box loader like I did for the bee farm. Otherwise, the machine just gets overrun so, so, so fast. There's also filled up so, so many shulker boxes. 19 and a half to be exact. And I might as well leave the rest here. And I, I'm going to just set the farm off, okay? So I think if I go like that and then press it once, then the farm will just be going and it should. Yeah, look at that. Fantastic. Cobblestone being created, going into the chests. I could put these into storage or I could place them around here, grab another shulker box worth of redstone. In fact, make that two and then put the quartz I have right here into there. Plus mine up a few extra ones. And basically, if I can fill this up, I can craft an entire shulker box worth of observers, which will just be useful forever. The only issue is that I, yeah, I need quite a bit more quartz. Yeah, 18 stacks to be precise. And do I have any at my bartering farm? That is the question. I, I'm leaning towards the answer no. I feel like I probably will have looted them already, knowing me. Because I, you know, could never say no to uh, to taking them when they're there. But there is only one way to find out, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and see. And the answer is, it's no, isn't it? I knew it. Nothing there. But not to worry, because I can take this pickaxe and spend a bit of time in the nether harvesting quartz. I'm sure getting 18 stacks isn't going to take me too long. At this point, I have filled the shulker box up and I've got quite a lot in my inventory. So I'm going to slowly make my way back home, but continue picking up more if I see it. Home sweet home. And I think I'm just going to put all the quartz in a chest for now. And rather than use the crafter that I've made at the moment, it may be wise to save all the resources and instead do the expansion on this. And then I can use the observers to test it. So that is going to involve doing quite a lot of digging. That is mission accomplished on both this side and also the side all the way around here. And to do these first bits, I'm going to need glass. I'm going to need ice. I'm going to need packed ice and also some signs. Now, which one has the most? Okay, we'll just use oak signs this time. And I'll need quite a few gates. I've got quite a lot of dark oak ones. Maybe they'll do, I guess. And I'll craft a few more of them just so I definitely have enough. This is where the middle stream is going to be. And I'm actually going to have it go through this wall as well. This is exactly where they were all converge so I just need to okay well I didn't mean to do that making a mess of everything the sign's gonna be after on that one because we're, we're gonna have this on both sides and now that I think about it that's a stupid idea because the items won't go into the water stream it actually needs to converge right here which means ice there and another sign I'll get the water added as well and then the bigger collection areas can be built now rails can be added and there's gonna be observers just basically mirroring this so I need one on top of the glass like that another one will, well yeah we'll be right there so that will trigger all the observers which will trigger all the droppers just like they are over there that's everything sorted down here I've just got to cover up this platform and add the chests on top and I've also got to somehow come up with a way to get that alternating line thing to uh, to extend all the way over here I think Maybe I was just overcomplicating things. I'm pretty sure if I just replace this rail to instead be an observer, that, that should probably do it. So I'll give it a test run, see if it works. It almost does. It just doesn't quite reach all the way to the end, but I'm pretty sure if I just add another observer here. Okay, well, not there. If I instead add it here, 
There we go, it goes all the way to the end. Meaning all of the droppers are getting triggered. And I'm going to place down every single chest and surround it on all sides with the cyan concrete. Because I've realised, like, you'll be able to see these bits, but with the carpet, you won't be able to see what's underneath. So there's no point me going completely crazy. I might as well just fill in these gaps with stone. Just to save myself some cyan concrete. It looks a little strange, but the floor is now complete. But it won't look strange once I start adding all the carpet on top. And that is it. Section number two is done. And now to build an entire third one on this side. And it is done. The uh, the machine is now three times its original size, which means I can offload all of this spare stuff, grab the shulker box of nether quartz and see, is it going to work? I'm going to evenly distribute it like this. So I'm going to take one layer for each chest. So that will go into there. These ones will go into here and the final ones into that one chest. In an ideal world, I'd have one shulker box's worth of materials for every single one. And then I would, you know, be able to get three times as much to crafting. But I don't really have enough redstone for that at the moment. So I'm just having to split it up into three. There we go. Now for the moment of truth. Is it going to be too fast enough? Is it going to be a good enough speed? Is it going to work? Here we go. I'm just going to go for this. It's going to start dispensing lots of stuff. Theoretically, I mean, I can hear stuff being, but is it working? Oh, it's all coming in, so it must be. Oh, wow, okay, I need to just, um, uh, I need to just step away, hold on. Yeah, I didn't think about, uh, sorry, not my fireworks. Now, I'm just gonna start making observers. Oh dear, this is, uh, this is bad, ladies and gentlemen. It's too, no, 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 we're getting mixed up, hold on. I need to be ready much faster in future for the crafting. I just have to be, like, you know, taking these ones out, going like this, because it's, it's gonna be coming through fast. And then as soon as I can, see, this is the speed I can keep up with, no problem. Although it's it's pretty quick, isn't it? Look at the speed of this. Okay, is it too fast? I don't know, but I tell you what, I'm going through observers. You know what? This is this is perfectly fine. I can keep up with this absolutely no problem. When I have to empty it, that maybe it's a little bit. No, you know what? It's still fine. It's still absolutely fine. And they're all going into the chest. That was incredibly quick way to craft them all. I'm very pleased with this crafter. I think I've just when once I do this, I've got to get ready straight away to be crafting. If I let it build up too fast, then you start getting into a few problems. And I definitely will be making this room look so, so much better. So it kind of fits in more with the aesthetics of this room. And you know what? I've decided I've got to modify this design. I've got to come up with some way to unload these shulker boxes really fast. And I've come to realize that removing the chests and instead just going ahead and placing a shulker box in like this, I can open it. I can, oh, I can't open it. Oh, the fence, does the fence stop it from opening? Really? That's strange. But it is emptying the items very, very fast at the very least. And I think that is going to be the best way to do this. Just have nothing there and then add shulker boxes in. And to make it work even better, I'm going to grab a bunch of fences and then I can use pistons to push them in. In fact, I've changed my mind to that as well. What if instead I just had a block here and then, yep, this is, it's all coming together, ladies and gentlemen. Then I can push this down. It should still mean that everything functions correctly. So if I was to go ahead, I can't really use this shulker box because I've, I've got it for over here. But if I, let, I'm just going to, this is the test run, ladies and gentlemen, basically. I put this here. I put the shulker box in and it starts emptying and it works fine. This is a brilliant little uh, little thing. So yeah, I'm gonna use pistons and get them all pushed down. And it's sorted. I just now have to put the shulker boxes into each gap and it'll make it a vastly superior machine. I am starting to think that maybe I should have kept it as fences because notice what happens when you break the shulker box. It gets picked up by the hopper underneath. That's not a massive problem. It'll just mean, right, like right now I can grab them from here. But it will, generally speaking, mean that I'll just have to activate the machine and they'll come through here with the shulker boxes, which I think is not a not a big problem. There we go, they're all in. And the only tiny little thing I'd like to finally do is just place sign carpet on these gaps. It'll, it'll just make it look that little bit better and that little bit more professional. There's also no shulker boxes at the end here because I'm making droppers. Droppers don't have nine crafting squares. You know, one of them is empty, so that's why. And so I think I'm ready to go. It's going to be pretty quick, so I've got to be... As braced as I can. Here we go. Once the redstone starts coming, we can start crafting the droppers. And I have just got to keep on top of it. Now, is cobblestone coming faster than redstone? It shouldn't be. I think I think the speed is, is fairly similar. And so far, everything is working fantastically. I'm managing to craft them. I'm managing to empty the inventory. And there we have it. They've all been crafted. I did at one point accidentally make a stack of furnaces, which is <laughs> why that, uh, that's not quite works intended. And it's the reason why I still have more redstone left than cobblestone. Because, yeah, it just unbalance things ever so slightly but that's not a big issue because i can just go something like that craft the remaining droppers this machine has been a job very well done i guess i can just mine all these up now and they will be sent through the system yes perfectly through as expected what on earth is, are these blocks here are they just all shulker boxes? Yeah, okay, they're just loads of grey shulker boxes. Grey shulker boxes that are going to be filled up with droppers. Realistically, I think it would have taken me hours to craft all those normally. It would have taken forever. And to do it that fast, 
It's, it's pretty insane. I actually really love this machine. Don't know how I live without it for so long. Put all of these into here. And that's another job well done. You're probably thinking, why have I got so many pistons, observers, and, and droppers and stuff like that? I have got to build a massive TNT blast chamber for my dirt farm, so things like that are going to come in handy still. But I think the project that I should work on next is a shulker box loader for the cobblestone farm. And I need to get it working again. I'm sure something like that isn't going to be too tricky to do. That's all the items that I need. I'm not going to build the exact same shulker box loader that I did for the bee farm because I want to build this one so that it is tileable. Why do I want one that's tileable? Well, the simple fact of the matter is that one hopper is not enough to collect all of the cobblestone that this cobblestone farm produces. So in order to allow the shulker box loader to keep up with the speed, it's, it's got to have like loads of them in a row for each of these hoppers. How many hoppers have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that means we do need nine of the shulker box loaders and we do need to get this cobblestone out of the way and into these shulker boxes. Now, is every single one of them successfully emptied? Sad that this, oh, I'm missing 60. Part of me just wants to manually mine up some of this. Will it work? Does it, does it just, just go all, yeah, and it regenerate? Yeah, of course it works, SP. This is, this is a great cobblestone farm. I'm going to mine enough until um, <laughs> I've just got enough to perfectly fill the shulker box up. This is actually a great cobblestone generator. I'm, I'm impressed. That's mission accomplished. Everything perfectly filled to an exact amount. You know what it's going to be like. And now I think, I think I can, rem no, I, I can, ooh, I'm just trying to think how this is going to work. All those hoppers can stay, but it's these chests that need to be going. And in fact, now that I think about it, it's probably in my best interest to grab an empty bucket, pick up this water, and I'm going to change how these hoppers work. Instead of them facing across like that, I'm instead going to have them facing downwards. And they'll basically be facing down into where the shulker boxes will be. That definitely makes more sense. I've still got this water bucket as well, so that could go along. You know, I'll do the water at the end. I feel like I'll end up flooding everything. But a lot of digging does need... Oh, no. I forgot about the ravine under there. Yeah, a lot of digging, though, needs to happen. Although, realistically, it might be helpful that there's a ravine here because I actually only need to worry about building a floor below here. Unfortunately, I don't really have the blocks for it. However, I have <laughs> lots and lots of cobblestone. So, although I, yeah, I tried to make an exact amount, doesn't matter. All right, because I need it all. In fact, I'm going to grab two stacks because we need these building blocks. We're going to build ourselves a nice floor below just needs to be below here this also needs to be removed and now observers can be added going into every single hopper then barrels along here although i'm i'm one barrel short that's annoying the, so the idea is that the barrels are what you put the shulker boxes into the empty ones and then full ones will come out in the chest but yeah i, I want one extra barrel there must be you know what, i'll just get the wood from here nobody's gonna notice if i just happen to remove one tree and i'm pretty sure in this direction i have a crafting table well let's put it this way in this direction, I should have a crafting table. And if I don't have a crafting table, I will be adding a crafting table. But I do have a crafting table, so there's no need to worry. There we go, barrel crafted. I also said crafting table way too many times there, didn't I? But anyway, that's the last... Well, I was going to say it's the last one successfully sorted. No, don't do... Don't... What are you doing? Okay, now it is the last one sorted. I made that way harder than it needs to be. Going to get my pistons and line them up like this. Now I'm going to start adding all the chests in. Then there needs to be blocks along here. And I'm, I'm missing some. I need slabs as well. Not a big problem because as we already now know, there's a crafting table over here where I can make whatever I need and place them above. Then the hoppers are going in. More blocks in here next. With dispensers on top, these are what are going to dispense the shulker boxes. Oh my goodness, it's going dark already. I've been building this for way too long and I'm still not done because I need to add a comparator line all the way along here and a load of redstone at the end of it. Next, I better remove all of these because they're completely in the way and get some sleep. I made a comment about how dark it is and then I just, I just plan to stay awake apparently. Well, not tonight. Oh no, no, no. We are getting some sleep and I am going to be adding hoppers. So yeah, that's how whatever's in these barrels, which will be shulker boxes, end up in the droppers and then the droppers We'll send it into the dispenser. The final couple of bits are pretty easy. We're just going to have observers facing down and observers facing into that. Although I'm starting to run out of space. I think I can just about do this. I want to put redstone torches on every single one. I hear things happening, but yeah, it should be done. I think I've finished it. The water can go back. There's only one thing that I'm missing and that is shulker boxes. Yep, I, I haven't actually brought any of the shulker boxes. But realistically, I didn't have space for them, all right? So let's, let's just accept that that's my explanation. Didn't have enough room, although that is all about to change because not only am I going to grab loads of the do i just do that well yeah i'm not only gonna do that i've decided because also in here i have some shulker shells but it's it's not enough all right we're okay apparently i don't have loads of shulker shells here. i do have loads of shulker shells somewhere so if we do need to 
get all of them, we can do that. But I might as well put every single one in here. And do I have any more stripped logs? Just a curious question, because wood supplies, yeah, do seem to be getting a little bit low. That's not very good. I, I would like loads more chests. Like I say, I don't have that much wood at the moment. As soon as I finish the dirt farm, I will have loads more. I don't want to use the dark. You know what? We'll just we'll just have to deal with the wood we've got, which is actually a pretty good amount when you look at it. Yeah, we've actually it's loads. I don't know why I'm uh, being so picky. So I'll put that back in there. I'll grab a couple more empty shulker boxes. That looks good. Then they can all be put into these barrels. And to actually get the machine going, I need buttons. And I, I did have buttons, but I left them in the chest room. I dropped them off, so... I, actually, I have to go and get those again. Also, those of you that have been watching for a while may also recognize those shulker box loaders because they are the exact same ones that I used for my EOL farm storage. You know, nice, they're tileable. They've been very reliable. I've not had any problems with them that I can remember. So they're very, very good in my opinion. And that is why they have been reused for the cobblestone farm. Anyway, my stupidity... Yeah, there, there's the buttons. My stupidity in dropping off the buttons is a positive, actually, because it means I can grab even more shulker boxes from here because... I, I'm overrun with shulker boxes, realistically. We might as well start grabbing dark grey and purple. Yeah, whatever. Whatever we can fit. You know what? Let's optimise my storage. I will need those rockets to get across. So, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to grab all of that. There we go. One space for this, which I'm going to have to use my fist. Very, very slow, I know. But I don't have much use for all of those shulker boxes. So, getting them in the cobblestone farm will, will really help. I've put loads of shulker boxes in. The question is, where are my items? Okay, they're in that one. All right, I've, I've worked it out. I think I might actually just craft enough shulker boxes so that it fills the... I don't know. You know what? We've probably got enough for now. But even if we have got enough, remember, that's not how SB737 works. Let me just put these buttons down. I'm going to put the buttons down and press it on every single one. That is basically... I, I hope I'm not pressing them too fast. I don't think that's a, a thing. But... Um... <laughs> Well, it, 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 it didn't work, guys. Why didn't it work? Because SB's an idiot and forgot to add nine of the observers. But remember, it's always a positive. Why is it a positive? Because I've had to come all this way back. And what can I now take with me? Yes, I can take even more shulker boxes. In fact, I'm basically not going to have enough shulker boxes left at home. I'm starting to wonder if this is a good idea. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm being too hasty, but I, probably not. Oh, we can get, oh okay, we, we leave those behind. Um, the, They go down there. Make sure we're only bringing empty ones. That's, that's the other rule. I think... Look at that. Brilliant. Just about took everything. And I also only have one firework rocket to get me all the way back to that cobblestone farm. So I shall use it sparingly, meaning I think I could actually get all the way to spawn without using a rocket. I always do use a rocket to speed things up, but with a bit of smart flying and avoiding the lava. Look at that. Straight in, straight down, straight round the... Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to bump into you, but very, very nice indeed. And I can fly over with that final rocket. Straight into bed. There we go. All observers in. Now when I press the button, it they extend. Okay, that's more like it. I can just go ahead and get all of these out. And the shulker system is ready for business. I'm going to add in even more of these. I think... I've just realized I, I want to try and fill up every single barrel. That is a lot of shulker boxes. But if anybody can pull it off, it's SB737. Although realistically, it's probably not going to be SB737 because I don't have enough wood for it. I think, I, I think I'm just overdoing it with wood. So I think I prioritize these ones at this end because they're going to be the ones that get filled the most. Job well done. If I do say so myself. Now I've just got to make sure I can somehow... Where's my axe? Get this farm going. But some... Oh, I do have a lot more stuff in there. You, no, don't be tempted, SB. You've, you've done enough. Instead, the focus has to be on why it stopped working. There's obviously something not right with this TNT duper. And I've got to try and get to the bottom of it. Seems that there's an issue where this observer is in the wrong place. This TNT is in the wrong place. And there should be a no block there. And I, I don't know why there isn't. Maybe it burnt. I don't, can not, I don't think note blocks can burn. So I do need to go and get an extra note block. I do also need to grab myself some extra firework rockets. Of, uh, yeah, well, we knew we used them all up. I just forgot to get, uh, get more. So anyway, let's go back and get one note block. Because that is my first priority. There we go. Conveniently, I have quite a lot in the chest there, don't I? So that goes there. It didn't seem to break anything. That's good. And it's observer here. TNT here, and I think that should fix it. Only one way to find out. Please work. Okay, it seems that TNT is dropping, and it's blowing things up, and it's blowing cobblestone up, and the farm is still absolutely fine. Still don't know what happened to that note block, why it was disappeared, but it's there now, and it's safe. Cobblestone is successfully coming through. That is perfect. Now, it does seem to come, as you can see, faster than the hoppers can take it, and once that hopper gets overloaded, then it moves on to the next ones, and it just kind of works its way down like that. And so the next question is, will 
the shulker box loader work? I'm fairly confident it will. I'm not going to sit here and just sit and wait and see what happens because that's just a waste of time. Instead, I'll gather up these full cobblestone boxes and I'm also going to go to the honey farm. Make sure this is all working completely fine. Look at that. It's still working fantastically. I'm going to take all these with me, although I'm not going to take them with me. I am going to turn them into honey blocks and replenish the bottles. I've still got a lot of bottles left, but I do like to keep on top of it. Job done, and I've ended up with loads of honey blocks in the process, which is nice. I will use these shulker boxes to replenish this, although it's kind of full, isn't it? So maybe... I guess they'll have to go in the cobblestone farm. I'm trying to... Yeah, that's going to go there. Yeah, I think the, it makes sense to take these other purple shulker boxes, load up the cobblestone farm, and maybe a shulker box is filled by now. I don't know. Maybe it's been a little bit too soon. There's only one way to find out, though. And the answer is... No, not yet. I'm, I'm sure it is working. I, I will just double check that things are exiting the shulker boxes. Um, are they? Oh, let me just let me just find this out. Yeah, they, they have to be. Otherwise, the number won't be going down, would it? Okay, it's working. I'm just being paranoid for no reason, aren't I, guys? Beautiful. Feels great to put all those honey blocks in there. I might as well at least make a bit of a start on this room because it it looks okay, but everything else looks like the walls look terrible. It needs to look like this area, so that is at the very least going to be blackstone walls and yeah, blackstone walls, blackstone roof. And that might just be it. It might be the most uncreative build ever. But you never know. I might try something a little different just to try and spice it up a bit. Walls and roof nicely done. It's already looking better. I'm kind of thinking, should I remove these hoppers? Because they look a little strange. But they're useful for putting shulker boxes on. Unless I had another area you could put the shulker box. We'll, we'll leave them there for now. And I think... I think I'm going to go for the classic. Border of Blackstone. Although I've run out mid-thing. Hold on a second. Like I was saying, Border of Blackstone. And apparently there's some water up there. I, I want to somehow get... Oh, no. Now it's going to go into the system, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I, I, I'll, I'll cross that bridge and worry about it in a bit. I just need to yeah, get rid of... What on earth is this? Is this... Oh, this is, must be from the infinite water source above. In that case, I do want to keep it here because it's, it's handy to have. I will... Dig my way out. That is all going to get dug away anyway at some point. I'll turn on the machine and then my blackstone will come through. Oh man, it's so noisy though. <laughs> Being stood above a load of droppers going off non-stop. Thankfully, it doesn't have to be like that for long because... I'm... There we go. It's come through. Then this middle bit is going to be completely mined out. And once you see what I'm doing, you'll realise it is definitely an SP737 classic. It's basically the only way I know how to make a wall. Because we're going lava along here with glass panes in front of it. This could all get a little bit messy if I'm not careful. Come on, SP, get it down. RIP to the carpets. They're sending on... <laughs> SP, what, what did I think this was going to be a good idea? Right, we, we've kind of messed up a little bit here, but I can fix it. Just got to break those. Like I said, though, it's an SP737 classic. I'm just usually better at doing them than this. But that's probably something to do with the fact that I usually add the, the glass panes in first and then the lava in second. Yeah, that, that definitely works way better. Okay, well, why did it flow over this way? You know what? I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm definitely going to do the same thing on this side. And also this wall, this wall, and all the rest of them. It's done. All the walls are done. And you know what? I think it looks good. Say what you will, that it's a repetitive thing that I do all the time. I think it not only looks good, it also fits the theme of this room up here with the lava and everything. So I, I, I think I'm glad how I, with the way I've done it. The only thing missing now is to get the roof sorted. It shouldn't take too long, although it is quite a precise job. And there we have it. The roof is now complete. The room is complete. Well, it's not quite complete, actually. I need to just replace this carpet. There we go. Because, yeah, the lava completely destroyed it. Good stuff. I'm going to grab my shulker boxes that I've left fluttering the area. But what do you think? It's nothing crazy. It's just, it's a fairly basic. Looks very, very plain, to be honest. Not very decorated. I should maybe add slabs, corners, but I don't care enough. It looks better than what it did before. I am also, just in case any of... What have we got there? We've got a glow squid in <laughs> Apparently sometimes, uh, yeah, glow squids spawn into it. But just in case it picked up any stone, did these hoppers, this will send it around. Look at that. See, it did. I know what my things will do. So I think that's enough. We'll now turn it off, grab them, and get them into storage. And the next thing to be sorted is this dirt farm. It, it needs completing now, and I am I'm going to do it, okay? It needs a few tweaks just to make sure it properly works. For example, these dispensers, which you can't quite get to, but yeah, they need a water bucket in each. I also I think it's going to be beneficial for me. It will it stock itself with bone meal, but I think it's going to be beneficial if I actually do that myself as well. Also, why do I feel like I've done these colours the wrong way around? Surely the purple stuff... Uh, the, the, yeah, the shulker should be in the purple shulker box. And the, uh, the wood should be in the brown shulker box. That makes way more sense. Just a little quality of life change. Nothing major. So I'm going to take these two water buckets. 
And then I'm going to try and find the doorway, which is right here, to get both of them added. Then I'll also grab two empty buckets. That's probably easy. And I'm going to fill them. What's the best way to fill them? I could... You know what? We're going to, we're going to risk it, okay? We've got to be quick thinking here. So we've got to mine and pick up. Oh, look at that. Fant fantastic. No, don't like that. It's oh, you did it great, and then you messed up. Please don't flow all the way to the ground. It's too late, isn't it? <laughs> Take two. There we go. No mistakes this time. Yeah, it's just going to make a big mess on the floor. But I guess the snow will fix it eventually. Anyway, I've got to go now and try and get through to the other side, which I suppose... It's easier said than done. I'll just have to mine my way through. That's probably the easiest way. And then these two can be filled. That will basically make it so that water dispenses and it'll collect up anything that the moss produces. For example, say the moss produces some grass or some azalea. It'll pick those up and then it'll send them down either through there or through the other side. And then once they're through, they get reused for bone meal, which is perfect. It, it means, you know, that the, the farm is way more efficient because it, it replenishes its resources. And as I was saying, speaking of bone meal, it would make sense for me to just fill up my inventory completely and then begin filling these droppers with it. Like I said, it will do that itself anyway over time, but it, it just gets the farm going faster if it's already got bone meal in. Perfect. They're all done. I think maybe I could do that one above as well. And then I'll just let the other ones replenish themselves naturally because I can't really get to them. Although... Is this? No, that's a water, that's water book, isn't it? Yeah, I can't really get into those. Can I get into this one here? Oh, I can. You know what? We'll, we'll add to this one as well. And also this one as well. And then a few of them along here are also going to be done. I've added bone meal as far along there as I can. It'll definitely help getting things going. But in order to make it so that these droppers actually transmit things all the way, I need to change a block. I'll do some fancy building here. I, yeah, I'm going to have to break a... I think a breaking glass should be fine, right? Yeah, I, I don't think I'll... <laughs> I don't think I'm going to destroy anything. Basically, I want to change this block here, that's a waterlogged thing, to be a to be a an actual block, and then when an observer powers it, it will then power that dropper. That's that's the way it's going to work. So I'm going to go like that and that, and I don't think we we broke anything. That's good. Okay, <laughs> that makes a change, doesn't it? We can also reach a few more droppers from down here. Every single one helps. I'm going to do as many as I can, and with that, I think I can start running the farm. I can't plant any saplings because if they grow, then it'll start obviously making dirt. And then if it starts making dirt, it'll all get jammed up down there because I haven't yet built the blast chamber. But at the very least, I can set it off so that bone meal starts getting transmitted everywhere. And that's, that's, you know, that's a good one. And as you can see already, because I filled up all those other ones, we've got the bone meal coming here. And then once this one's full and all the droppers behind it, then this one would fill, but that's that's kind of a, a bit down the line yet. Although I am for now just going to pause the farm because I want to leave the area and I don't want it to break whilst I'm gone. Why will I be leaving the area? Because I will need to get the resources to make the TNT blast chamber. I am also going to remove this little bit of contraption here because basically the, when the blocks come, they get pushed by this and then this machine will push them downwards. But I don't actually need them to be pushed downwards. I'm just going to have the blast chamber, like this will just feed directly into it, so... That'll be absolutely fine. Fairly simple bit of stuff to get rid of. I'm just, yeah, going to get rid of all that so I have the space. And then finally, this bit of obsidian. Is there a wandering trader down here? Have you been here the whole time? Or are you a new one? An another new one. Again, useless. Imagine if they actually gave you good stuff. They and, and you're like, whoa, it's a wandering trader. But no, they're, they're just pointless. The only thing wandering traders are good for is on things like super flat or, or in a world where you can't get certain items. Then they give you something good. But other than that, they're, <laughs> they're pretty pointless. I also might as well do my best to take away... Okay, that, they're all full. Keep all them then. But I'm going to try and take away any empty shulker boxes. And all the stuff in here, I think, can be taken as well. So I'm going to give that a go. Have we got the inventory space? We have. But we haven't got the inventory space then to take all of that stuff. I'll come back for it some other time. Because I do also want to chuck the scaffolding in here. Do I have a, a scaffolding? Maybe this is my scaffolding one. I thought I had another one, but I guess not. We'll pick up the ender chest. And thanks for using my ender chest and a bit of organization. I've got everything. This really is the beauty of the auto sorter. I don't have to sort everything out. Let that do the work. I just get to chuck everything in the chest. When you see a big mess like that, it's uh, it's very, very... Well, I'm very, very glad to see it, put it that way. And now I can begin gathering up all the materials for the TNT Blast Chamber. It's going to require quite a long list of items, but thankfully not quite as many as I had to do for the actual tree farm. And when I say tree farm, I of course mean dirt farm that uses trees to make the dirt. And what's that? I need pistons and I need observers. Oh, wait. I have loads of them available crafted. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm making good progress, but there's still plenty more items to go. That's all the items I need. Actually, I don't need those sticks. I don't know why I've got them. 
So now I can begin building it. I'm going to use crafting tables and scaffolding because I, I have no other blocks of inventory available. So this is the very bottom platform and it's part of the water collection system. This little bit here is definitely too small to collect everything, but over here, I'm making it bigger. Don't you worry about that. These trap doors will also all be waterlogged, so I'm going to grab some water out of here. And I'll just build myself a little water source because it's, it's, it's definitely going to be needed so that I can waterlog every trap door individually. There we go. Mission accomplished. I'll get rid of this bit of water and everything should, yeah, perfectly flow down. I will also need more water to go in this chamber here, but I, I reckon I'm going to use ice. That might be... And hey, there's ice everywhere. Don't even have to go back home for it. I can literally just mine it like this. And of course, I want to be renewable, so I'm going to mine away ice like this so that it can all replenish I'll, if I mine that one. Perfect. And these can be added here where they will be broken. I'm also going to spawn proof and snow proof <laughs> the... Uh, yeah, this is mainly the snow proof needs to happen because those shulkers over there, you'll never get mob spawning over here. But yeah, I definitely want to make it so that there's no snow to get in the way. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, but better safe than sorry, isn't it? And then it's just a case of building up this glass tube and filling it with water as I go. At this level, I'm able to add all of the redstone components. So this is the pistons. It's going to push the, the blocks around so that they get TNT'd efficiently. And the good thing is, it's basically the same thing on every side. So it's, it's, it's fairly... You know, once you've done one, you can do them all. Progress is being made nicely on the machine. This is where the TNT dupe is going to be. I'm not going to actually put the TNT in just yet until the end. And um, there's a safety switch here. So if I flick that, the TNT dupe, you know, the TNT won't blow everything up. But it's definitely, definitely, yeah, getting there. All the pistons are in. That's where the, uh, the TNT will go. And this lamp, if it lights up, will tell me that everything is out of sync. Hopefully it never lights up, but that means turn the machine off, basically. I think the machine turns itself off even when, when that happens. All that redstone down there is now done, so I can start adding a platform up here, which I will stand on, and the blocks, as you can see, we're in line. The blocks are going to be pushed along here, and they're going to actually be pushed in a gap down the middle. And then you can see the pistons will all push it in four different directions, split it up, and it'll split it up to where the red stained glass is in every corner, and then it will all converge at the bottom. And right here is where I would like to put together a bit of a storage. There will be a shulker box loader. I, I don't know why I don't build them normally when I first build the farm. This one is gonna have one straight away, not building it, you know, 20 years later like I did with the cobblestone farm. The shulker box loader bit is done. I am missing a piston that needs to go there, but you can see the shulker box is there. And when it empties, the piston will push and it will then... So it, it doesn't actually sort the items. So this farm will mainly produce dirt. It'll also produce some logs and some cobblestone. Maybe some moss? I don't think, maybe not. And then the shulker boxes will just come into here. I Yeah, I should, I think, maybe add an auto sorter as well. It could be an idea. I don't know. I'll worry about that some other time. One thing I do know, though, is that I'm one piston short. Apparently, I'm an idiot and <laughs> didn't bring enough. There we go. Grab you. Can't believe I forgot one. And whilst I'm here, I should get some ice because there's a few more to place and I apparently ran out of it. It's going to go right there. And this water tube is almost as tall as it needs to be. Just one more. Okay, well, that didn't work. I've got two of those to place. But yeah, just one more layer up and it will be done. I do need to have a waterlog slab at the top as well, just for safety purposes and all that. And it'll keep the items from bouncing up. You know, they'll just go to the slab, float through and then into that hopper, which will take him into a shulker box. Now to finally add a roof, and it's done. The TNT blast chamber is complete. Okay, wait, it's not complete. When I said the word TNT, I realized I forgot the most important part of the whole thing. Yes, I forgot to actually add the TNT. So the safety switch is on, and then the TNT, if I can grab it, just goes in there. There we go. Then I can turn the switch back off. And I don't want to forget to water log it as well. That's uh, that's important. Don't want to forget. Yeah, it would be a disaster if I forgot that. Now... It is, it is fully done. Everything is, as far as I know, ready for testing. So hopefully nothing goes wrong. I'm going to drop off all this stuff because I don't need it anymore. There we go. This part is nice and easy, although I don't have a way to sort carpets. I need to expand this storage system, don't I, so I can sort more stuff because there's so many things that I just can't. And it's, 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 it's not that bad, but it can at times be a little bit annoying. But anyway, I am now ready. I'm going to bring a few spare saplings just in case. And I'm also going to build a regeneration beacon, which will require iron blocks. I'm sure I have iron blocks. I knew I'd add some somewhere. And the reason for this beacon is because sometimes you take damage using this farm. So it's more just a precautionary measure. It, it, the damage is minimal, but if you were there for an hour, then maybe it could kill you eventually if you ran out of hunger and stuff. So just to make sure that it's impossible to die, a regeneration beacon will solve that problem. All built up. Not too hard at all. Let me now. Why have I got some grass blocks? Where have they come from? I, I Well, I mined them. I know where they came from. <laughs> I don't know why I ask stupid questions sometimes. Anyway, I am going to... I'm trying to think what I want to use for this beacon. Because I want to use an iron ingot, ideally. But it, apparently, there isn't any just hanging about. Well, there is now. Because I am going to turn that 
into iron ingots, and then I'm going to put one there, put the rest in there, put that shulker box back there and mine up the ender chest. Then that can be plonked on top, that can go there, and I think... Okay, there we go, it's all working. I'm trying to think what I want. I, do I want... I, I'll get resistance and regeneration, because you can only get regeneration one. And that's, that's going to do it. That's going to get the farm completely finished, safe, and ready to use. So once I take the saplings out of the barrel, the farm begins. I'm then going to get in here and hold right-click at this very angle, and the trees will grow. And you can see stuff is going on all around me now. There's water flowing out. Moss has been created, it's been turned into spruce dirt and all that, as you can see, well, into, uh, into Podzil, which will turn into dirt. And in theory, all of that which is being created, if my machine works, as you can see, look, you can see what's going on. The water comes out because it, it breaks everything. There you go. And then it, it kind of will push it all so it can be compostable. I shouldn't be picking this up. Why have I got it? But if I go ahead and just stop the machine temporarily, you'll see not every single stone gets turned to moss, which is why this farm does produce stone. And sometimes you end up with it producing wood as well. But yeah, it should be pushed through here. And then this, every time one comes, a block comes to here, I could, um, I could simulate this for you. <laughs> one comes to here, pushes it down instantly. It's, it's, it just automatically detects it, pushes it down straight away. It's awesome. And then down there, when they get detected, they split into four different ways. I can then come all the way down here, and you can see that it is starting to put it all together. It's got the red stained glass in there as well, but it's putting it all together. And once it gets to the perfect amount or the perfect point. A TNT will be released and blow it all up and it'll be the most efficient it can possibly be. When an item does get blown up, it'll be pushed into there where it will go all the way up and then into this hopper, into the shulker box loader. And then the shulker boxes will come into this giant chest. So it, it all seems to work well, but I haven't tested it for an extended period of time. So I'm good. Well, I shouldn't be uh, in there. Let's just go back a little bit. There we Okay, we're kind of in the block still. Not taking damage. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, I'm going to run it a bit longer and see how it goes. It really is satisfying to see the machine at work. And the TNT very efficiently blows everything up. One issue I do feel like I'm having is I'm not getting enough saplings back. Really, it should destroy the leaves and you should get back as many saplings as as you used, but it seems like I'm not quite managing that. It's not a major problem because the saplings aren't that hard to get, but it may be wise to instead have these saplings get composted and instead just swap this round a little bit. I'll instead, craft a load of chests, which is going to require a crafting table, which I have 44 there, ready and waiting. So we'll craft, I'll craft them all into crafting tables, but then I'll need more hoppers because I've not really got any idea how many saplings this actually does produce that normally would get turned to bone meal. So um, I think two hoppers will do it, and then we've got three double chests. Yep, that's perfect. And they can just be... Okay, well, not there. That's too high. It needs to be one lower, doesn't it? And I've got an angle. We can put that there. Fantastic. So, yeah, now I'm just going to do this. Now that I've got to be careful that I don't lock any hoppers, so... Hmm. I've got to... Yeah. I, I'm going to end up messing some up here. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate this. So it's instead like that. I'm going to have the chest on the end, and then I could do it one more time. I could do it one more time if I can just... Just sneak me away under- there we go. Nope, not quite. Uh, you know, it's all gone wrong. I'm building the platform. It'll just make life easier. Then it's like that. <laughs> that to there. So yeah, this will be filled with saplings for me. Just double check it's working. They should be coming down. Oh no, it's not working. Of course it didn't work. Why is it not working? Where did they go? <laughs> oh, they must have got- wait, did they- did they also get pulled below on this- Ah, oh, right, hold on, we're getting rid of this hopper as well. The real question is, where did that hopper go? I bet that hopper has gone all the way down here. Has it gone into this? Has it gone into... Has it gone into that shulker box? Oh, this is crazy. Keep trying to keep hold of it. Is the hopper in there? No, it's not. Wait, where did it go then? Okay, I'm an idiot. I didn't realise that this hopper was pointing that direction. Oh my goodness. Is it burning extra saplings as well? Well, we can't be doing that. You know how much we need those? Well, that's just as well I've, uh, I've done that. I mean, yeah, you do get overrun with saplings, but we don't want to burn too many of them. So that hopper... I suppose I could have it... I'll just do something like that that for now because I want to I want to be able to change it back to bone meal and then once to uh, turn into bone meal once I'm overrun by them but at the moment I've got a perfect amount so I'm going to leave it as it is um this is still loads of bones are we still good in the bone meal department yeah we've got loads so that's fantastic so I'll use this farm a little bit more and see how it goes that should be enough usage of the farm I'm going to put those saplings back in there you see we're already down to 13 so I'm hoping that the whole sapling farm up there has definitely worked how many did we get Tell you what, that's not bad because I, yeah, see, the thing is, maybe if I had these dispensing back to me in there, I could build a system for that. I could also not be bothered to build a system for that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's not, it's, it's not like I'm getting, oh, a crazy, ridiculous amount of saplings. 
but it, it, I'm getting enough, and that's the main thing. Time to do a little bit more testing. I've actually tried to realign the boat as well to see if that stops me from taking damage. We will uh, we'll find out in a moment as I get pushed. I didn't get to take damage yet. Maybe it's the boat alignment, and maybe it's the the poor boat alignment was mean I wasn't getting as many saplings as I should have done. No, the sapling return rate just doesn't seem to quite be good enough still. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm going to have to make it completely self sufficient. I need to make some improvements. Oh, and it's snowing. Well, doesn't really mean anything because now it's it's not snowing anymore. I've worked out the issue. I, I think I've worked out the issue. The farm should use this dropper timer to replace or replenish, should I say, the saplings by them going... They should prioritise going into this dropper, I think, and then they go into the cauldron that doesn't have anything in it, and then they go into that water stream, and that water stream takes them all the way around, and basically drops them through there and down, so it should be replenishing me, but I think something's going wrong, I'm gonna just run some more tests. I'm sure I can get to the bottom of this. So I've let it run for a while, let's just see what's happened. So this is where the saplings are going, and look at that, it's just filling up, they should be emptying and coming round. Why are they not coming round to me? That's the question. It looks like the answer, it could be, yep, it's it's because this is frozen. I think now that should send some round. Let's have a look, do, um, I can't remember where they'll be coming. They'll be coming out somewhere down there, maybe. To make sure that that doesn't ever freeze again, I'm just going to put a chest on top. I think it'll do. Didn't really have any other items handy that I wanted to use. And now to test again and see if anything changes. I think I've cracked the code. Items, I believe, are going into this cauldron. See if I can prove this by... Yeah, I picked them up, you see. So items are going into the cauldron. And this system has been activated all the time, which is why items are going into the cauldron. But it's here that's the problem. There needs to be 16 items in this dropper. And then that will activate this system, which will move those two pistons. Basically, it'll move the cauldron down and then that piston will extend, pushing the saplings into there. So that is why I'm not getting the saplings I need. Fantastic. I might as well just fill that up with all of them then. And get the extra bone meal from these. And get the extra bone meal from these. And that does it. The testing process is over. I have got, as you can see, a lot of dirt and wood and stuff. I need to make it so it sorts automatically. Probably not in this video, but at some point I will add an all, a better auto-sorting system to that. Because it's, it's going to get messy eventually. But my main priority right now is, is did it work? Did my plan work? Okay. We're going to take a stack. We're going to use the farm. And do I replenish all the saplings? Yes, the answer is yes. I just went from... A low amount of saplings and picked up loads of them. In fact, oh, even overflowing in my inventory. That's fantastic. Okay, the farm's now self-sufficient. Oh man, no wonder it wasn't regenerated. I, I just realized I didn't put any shulker boxes in this chest so that we'd have more. So the shulker box load automatically turned itself off. Very good. But I should probably try to avoid making that mistake in the future. And I'm going to attempt to make a bit of a modification to this. So I can tell I'm just going to get annoyed if I do have the cobble and the stone, well, the cobble and the wood going to the dirt chest. Like, they should all go into their own chests. And if I do it correctly now, I'll probably thank myself in the future. It's going to require quite a few more materials, though. Quite a few materials that won't be difficult for me to get. I've ended up with plenty of items, more than I initially intended. So the plan is to instead have the water flow out and this way and then round. The ice with scaffolding is just going to be there to make it so it flows further. Now here is where there's going to be a hopper, and there's going to be another one here. Both of these hoppers will have item filters in, so that they only accept I oh, Hang on a minute. I might... I've, I've changed my mind. Whilst, yes, I do want that. I think I'm instead... I'm going to use ender chests. Why not? Ender chests always look good. Then the two hoppers can be here. One for stone, one for wood. It'll be a pretty standard item filter. Then the item filter hoppers will go downwards. And they need to go far down enough so that they're out of the way of this. And this is where the shulker loaders can be built. I'm also going to use wither roses as the blockers. So that's there and that is there. We'll have cobblestone in this one. I need some oak logs. Any oak logs going around? I tell you, I know where there'll be some oak logs. Um, if I can just find the right spot. Spruce logs, I mean, by the way. In this shulker box right here, where we've got all sorts of extra stuff, I'll just grab... I don't want to grab more than the stack just yet until the shulker box load a bit is done, but those are are ready. Now I'm going to come down here and finish building these. Mission accomplished. Those two torches make it, yeah, all done. I can add the water up here. Of course, put that slab back and then I'm going to have this to top it all. And it should only be dirt that flows all the way to the end. This is all in theory. However, I can test it out just a little bit by... Hmm, I, I, maybe, you know what, let's, let's put it in action properly. I'll send it down through the bottom. So spruce logs, there we go, cobblestone. The thing is, the only thing, yeah, <laughs> I probably just sent through a little bit too much in one go for it to all get picked up. Um, so some of it has maybe got picked up. 
yeah, some of it has, just not all of it, because obviously there wasn't enough space. But normally you won't get that much wood or cobblestone going in one go, so I, I won't worry about that too much. I've dropped off all my items. Everything is full of shulker boxes. So it's time I start using this farm and get my infinite dirt. That should be enough time spent there. I've also got all sorts of extra items from it. But has it worked? Has it been filling up these shulker boxes? Oh, look at this. Okay, well, we've, we've a little bit of wood snuck through there. Here and there, so maybe I need to add a few... This second one doesn't count, by the way, because that would have already had it in before. But yeah, maybe I do need to add like an extra... Oh, what did I do there? As I was saying, maybe I need to add an extra slot or two of hoppers just to slow it down. Now then, did any of these shulker boxes actually fill? Doesn't look like... Oh, uh, well, we have an observer anyway. That's, that's good. I'm just going to see anyway how full they are, just out of curiosity. So that's a, that's a decent amount of wood. You know, obviously it's a dirt farm. It's not a wood farm, so we're not here doing it. What about the cobblestone? I don't really care about cobblestone anyway, because... I've, I've literally got a lot of cobblestone, as you guys have seen. Where did that go? Into here. And yeah, so that, not that much byproducts, which is it's a good thing, I suppose, because the main focus is to be getting dirt. And as that is my main focus, I, th I think I've succeeded at that pretty well, especially when you consider just how much dirt I have managed to get. So I'm going to load these into the chest of dirt. And what a job well done. You wouldn't have thought that making a dirt farm was going to be this much effort, would you? So the thing that I'd like to do first is very, very simple. Get 1,000 diamonds, because I I've never done that before. Although just before that, I should probably repair this elytra. That's perfect. And I'm going to start a timer to see just how long this project takes me. I'm going to begin the search right here at the place where I collected every single single block since it's actually built in an ancient city and ancient cities have diamonds knocking about all over the place i should probably use fortune then i know just how many diamonds i've got finally i found another but all in all they're kind of rare at the moment there we go now i've got 10 and i'm in a massive cave to explore with more diamonds there's my first stack and there's my first 100 now i'm up to two stacks and then three four five six Seven, and now eight, which means I'm past halfway. Or at least I will be once I've mined this. Fantastic. Ten stacks. But well, there's still many more to go. Mining these two up makes 700. And now 800, 900, and 1,000. Actually, slightly more, because there's another one there. Just look at them all. Don't they look great? And it only took me nearly five and a half hours. But it's all as well that ends well, because I can now make my way back home. Look at that, some ancient debris. Nice. Well, it will be nice if I don't die to these piglin brutes. Which is very close to happening. Maybe I should just continue flying back home. And to make a giant map of the world, I I'm of course going to need a lot of maps. I could craft them with a serious amount of paper, which would mean waiting ages for this farm to get loads of it. Or I could make a map farm. And as a byproduct, the farm will also get me loads and loads of paper. Now doing this is going to require hundreds of villagers, so a super fast villager breeder is what I'm going to go ahead and build. Every single item has been gathered up, and I also spent a bit of time getting loads of glass because it's going to come in handy too. And because this village breeder is going to be part of a massive hero of the village farm, that's how I'll get the maps and the paper, it needs to be built above a pillager outpost. And whilst there was a pillager outpost here, I can't really build it in this spot because I don't want to destroy my villager captain farm. But thankfully, I do know where there's another one. This is the place. It's only about a thousand blocks from my house. And the villager breeder has to be built up really, really high in the sky. This is the platform that will have loads of farmer villagers up here. The tricky part is the very, very fun task of getting villagers all the way up here. As the carrots grow, the villagers will throw them to each other, and that is why they will breed. Although I I, I didn't quite bring it up, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Instead, I will continue to build up these walls. This tube is where the baby villagers will drop down, and they'll walk over here because they're trying to get to these beds. And this lever here allows me to turn the breeder on and off. Now, when they come through here, they will get stuck right here and, and stuck on top of that wall. Then they'll grow up and go up above, float along, go through the powdered snow, land on the trapdoor. The ladders are there so that entity cramming isn't a problem, and my priority right now is to get some bones so I can use bone meal on the carrots. And I'll also need blocks and ice so that there can be a system to transport the villagers upwards. Time to get some bone meal crafted, some carrots grown, and more planted. And I've realised instead of building a massive water tube to get the villagers up here, that there is instead a better way. And that way will be to use nether portals. I need one that connects to this, which is above the nether. And then I'll make another one once I find a nearby village. Not exactly nearby or the type of village I was looking for. But you know what? the great floating village will do. The way I see it, I'm doing all you guys a favour. Now, I reckon I could use a job... Okay, I was going to say I could use a job site block to learn. 
It literally just walked through on its own. I'm not complaining. Come on, mate. You look lost. Let's uh, let's get you out of here. Just head through that portal and you'll arrive to your brand new job. Now to go and get five more of them. Welcome, villager number two. And whilst I could just breed those two to get the other four, I'm instead going to manually move them. I've got them all through. Some have come back through. What do you guys think you're doing? Oh, no, no, no. We can't be having that. Let's get this portal broke. Seriously, can't believe four of you came back through. Then when their cooldown is over, I can light it again and send them all through. Welcome, guys. This is your life now. And to speed things up, every single one of these crops is getting grown. Because the quicker their inventory is filled up with carrots, the quicker I will get more baby villagers. Well, they're throwing crops to each other. They're having baby villagers. The plan is working. It will take me 50 to 100 days to get the hundreds and hundreds of villagers that I want. And since I'm going to day 6,000, I've got loads of time. There's no rush. You lot can all breed to your heart's content. And I can get busy building the rest of this thing. This is the bit where all the villagers are going to go. So it's, it's going to be modified a little bit later once the villagers are in. But they will get ejected into their slots. As you can see, it is nicely filling up with baby villagers. Everything's coming along nicely. Another thing that we'll need doing for this farm is to completely spawn proof the outpost. Since I only want pillagers to spawn in one specific place. Look at this. We're starting to get adult villagers as well. Excellent. But to build this whole farm, I am going to need a lot more resources than what I've got. So going home to gather all them is is my next priority. There it is, every single item, and there's, <laughs> there's quite a lot of them. So now I can get this farm built. Well, after my elytra repaired anyway. So it's gonna start with a massive yellow platform down here that the pillagers will be able to spawn on. And then there will need to be a villager in this space here, and that is what is going to lure the pillagers to run up here and they'll go up this chute. And you'd think getting a villager would be a hard thing, but I can actually just build a quick portal, which will still connect to this one on the nether roof. And another villager can be kidnapped <laughs> from his home. And I now have no clue where he's going, but he's walking miles away in the wrong direction. What on earth do you think you're doing? Now he's left me no choice but to boat him by force. That's you in there, perfect. There's going to be another spawning platform right here. And this one's got redstone lamps on them so that the light levels can control whether the spawning platform are on or not. I also need one final villager right here to lure the pillagers that spawn on there. Oh my goodness, I just found the rarest block in Minecraft. A half bed. And the sun is going down. And the question is, can you sleep in it? I really want to know. Moment of truth. Nope. You, you apparently cannot use a half bed to sleep in. Anyway, this is the last of the villagers here. Once again, SP77 successfully ruined something. Because this guy won't get a job, I've got to manually move him. Which may take a little bit of time. I could be wrong, but I don't think I can use a nitwit for this farm. So he's kind of useless to me in the end anyway. Instead, I'll grab one of these guys and send him all the way down there. Okay, it, sadly he didn't survive the fall. I, I miscalculated. Good thing I've got 50 more to test it on. That one made the fall. Perfect. One out of two survivors. Are you kidding me? I was just about to say one out of two survivors is not bad. And then he nearly escapes. Thankfully he's okay. So now it's time to get back to work. And that involves building a massive slab roof for darkness. And a giant water chute to send up the pillagers. This is where the storage system is going to be. I've not currently set it up with auto sorters. Because I'm just going to, going to be getting maps and paper at the moment. But once I've got loads of them, I plan to change it to a redstone farm. But even for those, I probably won't be needing any sorters. The redstone is coming along very, very nicely. And this right here is where the player is going to AFK. So there needs to be... A trapdoor like this, and then the same on this side, and, and the trapdoors open and closing are going to be waterlogged so that they can easily be turned on and off. You can see, off and back on again. Not entirely sure how many villages I've got, but it's definitely a lot. And once I finish the red stuff of the redstone, I will probably start adding them into here. And once these last few final bits are down, it's done. The hero of the village farm is complete. Five of the slots have now been filled with 25 villagers. So once again, I'll move the activator rail along one and keep going until every single slot is filled. And there we go. It is now completely full of villagers. I've also got loads more in the pipeline ready and I have added a piston door to every level so that I can disable the breeder like that. So at the moment, it is switched off. And now I've got to pop back home to grab a few extra resources so that I can fully finish the farm. As you can see, this orange glass needs removing and then these rails also need mining up. I'm going to put glass right there and also there. Then pistons are going to push the slabs downwards and get mined away. And I need a row of blocks right here with more pistons facing into them. I can activate them all at once with a button, break them all, remove this top row of glass and redstone 
redstone, and then I'll finally waterlog the slabs. And that's it. The hero of the village farm is now complete and ready for testing. Well, it's almost complete. I just need to grab a little bit more water because in this tube, it doesn't quite go all the way up yet. I'm also going to quickly build something else before I use it. And, and, and I turn the mob switch off so now pillagers are going get, to get in the way. But yeah, I'm going to build a full regeneration beacon. That way, when I go AFK, I don't have to worry about starvation or anything like that. Although I, I didn't bring enough glass to completely spawn proof it. So <laughs> that's the next task. And with that done, I can now test out the farm. Loads of pillagers have come up and I have now got a raid starting. But what happens below is the raid tries to spawn and it instantly despawns because it's so far away. And because an ominous banner has dropped into there, the game detects that. And I've just got the hero of the village, as you can see in the top right. Now all these guys are soon gonna start throwing me gifts. And there we go. Just look at all the maps and paper flowing in. I seem to pick most of it up in my inventory. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it over there. And then I'm gonna go and do this with the fireworks so that all of it will successfully go into that chest system. It's working fantastically, so I'm going to run it for a bit and get as much as I can. A few hours have passed. Let's go ahead and see how much we've got. That's it, guys. Keep throwing it to me. Don't, don't stop. Also, I better eat some pork chops. Good thing I have that regeneration beacon, otherwise it would have been a problem. I'll turn the machine off with that. And look at all the paper and all of the maps. I did not expect to be getting that much. I think that is all that I'm going to need. I can also only guess that I've accidentally got a farmer in there because for some reason... I'm getting seeds thrown at me. But yeah, what a great farm this is. I'm going to nip back home and get some shulker boxes to be filled. A little bit overkill, but I think eight should be enough to collect all of the drops. One and a half shulker boxes worth of maps doesn't look like a lot, but that's 20,000 papers worth and also 2,500 compasses. So it definitely, definitely is better, especially when you consider I got a shulker box and a half worth of paper on top of that as well. And with all of that out of the way, I think I should finally do what I've been wanting to achieve since I started this world, which is to reach level 1,000. There we go. Level 900 has been reached. I hope I've got enough TNT left to get to level 1,000. And here it comes. Finally, Level 1000. I've never ever done that before. I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to keep going until this machine runs out of TNT, which by the looks of things, there's not that much left. Okay, so it shouldn't take too long. And the TNT has now finally completely run out. I've got none left anywhere. So the machine can be switched off. However, there is still a lot of XP here to collect, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to get all of it. And there we go. 1031 levels. A few levels to spare in case I need them for some reason. Now, this giant map is going to consist of 2,500 in total. It's going to be 50 by 50 wide. It's, it's going to be massive, and it's also going to be laggy. And because I don't want to break or corrupt the area around my house, I have got to find the perfect location. This looks good to me. So now I'm going to dig a massive hole for the build to go in. Finally! Mission accomplished. There is just one tiny little bit of bad news. My silk tux pickaxe did break. I, I now only have this fortune one available. And I forgot I got bad omen from a pillage. Oh, here we go. Now we've got a raid. Although it seems to have failed to spawn. So that's good news anyway. I'm trying to do this in as efficient a way as possible. That's pretty good. And I've successfully maxed it without going under level 1000. Now when it comes to placing all the maps, if I place them on glowstone, then they will not have any shadows and they'll look a lot better. But that does mean that I need 2,500 pieces of the glowstone which believe it or not I, I don't quite have. So I'm going to fly over to this raid farm to see if there's much here. And the answer seems to be yes, there are some shulker boxes with glowstone in them and a few random stacks. It's not a crazy amount, but it's still better than nothing. And how will I get the rest of all the ones that I need? Well, it'll be from my good friend, the cleric at the Void Trader. By the time I'm done, I should have absolutely loads. All emeralds have been traded and a good amount of extra glowstone has been obtained. And now I'll take all the glowstone and also all the white concrete and then begin work on this build. The sheer amount of time that it is taking me to place down all this glowstone is making me realize just how many maps there are gonna be. Good job I've got 500 days this episode. I've got a lot of exploring to do. Mission accomplished. And then I need a border of white concrete all the way around the outside. With that done, I can start putting the maps down anytime I want, but I still need a few extra resources for the rest of the build. For now, I've got enough of the items here to at the very least do most of the build. And for the walls, I kind of want it to look like a bit of a world map, so I'm going to kind of do like terrain like this and just kind of, yeah, make, make bits of green that are the land and then ocean around them. You know what? I have to say, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? And I reckon it'll be perfect once I've built it all the way around. 
There we go. I have left gaps in on four of the sides so that there's a way for there to be some staircases. Although apparently I don't have any quartz stairs at the moment, so I should uh, rectify that right now. And yeah, they'll just go along like that and then I'll break this and continue staircasing it up. Nicely done. And then round the edge, I'm going to have the concrete like this. And then another row where I'm going to leave gaps every four blocks because I want sea lanterns to go there. But unfortunately, I didn't bring any sea lanterns because I, uh, I've completely run out. So I'll fill in those gaps when I can. And then there'll be a quartz brick pathway that goes all the way around, followed by more white concrete with gaps for sea lanterns around the outside. I'm also going to add a border of blue concrete and then I can start placing this which will act as the base of the walls. And for those walls there's going to be pillars periodically along which I'm going to just mark out now and they're all going to be five blocks tall in total. It's really starting to take shape isn't it? Now in some of these gaps there's going to be blue concrete because I'm going to have water in them. In other gaps, it'll just be stone because there will be lava in here. It seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? So now I'll start putting the lava in and hope this sheep survives. Sheep, don't stand there. Move, run. My goodness, I didn't think it was going to make it. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll probably be safer in the water one. Anyway, with the lava in, it can be blocked up with glass panes. And I can do this in all the other gaps. That's every lava one successfully done. And in these blue gaps, I'm going to use ice to go for the water. Okay, that, that's not exactly how I envisaged it. As we're saying, I'm going to use ice to get the water. But I think water on its own, it's, it just isn't enough. So I'll pop back home, get a bunch of bone meal, and then I can add a bit of life to the water tanks. Might even add fish eventually as well, but for now, I'm just going to stick with what I've got. There we go. The wall is complete. Well, it will be soon, but... I've got to add another layer of this on top. And that does mean that I require a few extra items, such as end rods and black concrete. And I'll also make sure to farm some guardians to get the extra sea lanterns that I need as well. At this point, I've probably been here more than long enough to get uh, to get the things I need. Yeah, I've got plenty of stuff. But I also kind of want to get to level 1020, so I'm, I'm just going to stay here a little bit longer. There we go. I have made it. And now to craft myself a bunch of sea lanterns, which I can now place in the floor. So the way that more layers are going to be added up here is I'm going to first start with white concrete, keeping these pillars in, then I'll place black concrete behind and end rods in front. And that's how that bit will look. Then there needs to be five more of these pillared up and columned across. Now due to the fact that I have less space, it's going to be a little bit trickier to do this top bit, but still very, very possible. And that's going to be the pattern, a kind of checkerboard thing. So there needs to be water behind this one, which means putting down blue concrete. And this wall is now fully complete. And so I'm going to repeat what's there on all of the three other sides. This is, this is going to be a big job. And at long last, the walls are all done. And as to be said, I think it's looking very, very cool. There's a few little bits here and there that I've missed that just need tidying up. Also, do you like my floating grass? Yeah, it was above like a little water pool, so I, I kept it. I thought it looked kind of cool. And I'm still not going to put the item frames and maps down just yet because it will make things a bit laggy. And I want to make sure everything else is built first before I do that. So I'm going to nip home to grab a few extra resources to get the roof on. Deep slate bricks are going to be part of the roof and five stacks is all I need. And I've also got to head to the end to trade for a load more glass. Mission accomplished. So now it's time to add a deep slate border all the way around with loads and loads of glass in the middle to cover the entire thing. Placing all this is probably the biggest job. That's job done. Now, anytime I fly over this, I will be able to see the map through the glass. The map which currently still isn't there, so I've got more work to do. Such as terraforming the area so that it fits into the scenery a bit better. Which with this mountain here could actually work out to be quite a big job. It's definitely starting to get there. The hardest part is just making this mountain look natural. <laughs> because I've had to mine a load a bit away. And all of this stone is still going to have to be turned into dirt. I'm pretty happy with what I've done. I think it looks fairly natural, doesn't it? You know, like it's, like it's part of the mountain. Maybe not that big there. Should be good enough. I do still need to fill in this gap right here, which I can do with a bunch of stone and dirt on top. From here, it looks very, very cool. The final part of the build is to dig out an entranceway. Otherwise, there'd be no way in and out. It's all dug out. Now I need some quartz stairs and some white concrete so I can build the walls and finally the staircase. And the map room is done. All that is now missing is the most important part. Yes, the map. And apparently a sheep lives down here now. I, I, I don't know how you're still alive, to be honest. Now, building this map, as you might guess, is going to take lots and lots of exploring, which means I'm going to need lots and lots of firework rockets. Unfortunately, in here, 
I've only got two stacks left. And paper's an important part of that. I've got a decent amount, as you can see. But I would like more. I'm going to use the Hero of the Village Farm to get that later. But first, I'm going to grab all of this wood so that I know how much I need to make the item frames from all this leather. And then I want to make a bunch of shulker boxes, take them to the Hero Farm, and get loads more gunpowder. But yeah, first things first, I've got to craft all these sticks. That's all of them. All eight shulker boxes. Now I take all of these and place them into the auto crafter. Although what I've got so far will still be insufficient. I need to turn all of these into sticks as well. And now, time to make all the item frames. And some people were trying to tell me in the comments that I can like, you know, hold hold a uh, control and, and press Q on these. But you can't, it doesn't matter what you press, I can press shift, I can press anything. And you can't drop the entire stack from there. You can only drop it from there. I just thought I'd drop that in. And that should be all of them. Yep, every single one of them is here. And every single one of them needs to be placed down. This is actually going to be quite a daunting task, isn't it? So I'm going to drop these off here. The plan is to add the item frames as I add the maps. That way it'll just combat lag as I'm doing it all. And I really feel like in here, there is just not going to be enough spruce logs to make the amount of shulker boxes I need to restock up the EOL farm. So I'm going to spend more time at spawn using this dirt farm so that I'll have lots and lots more wood. That should definitely be long enough. And how much wood did it get me? A decent amount. Not even a full shulker box, but it'll do. Also grab myself a bunch of shulker shells from the shulker farm, as you can see. I have an abundance. And then all these can be completely filled up with shulker boxes. Mission accomplished, which means I can AFK here to get loads more gunpowder. It's been a few days and I reckon I'll have loads of gunpowder, as well as apparently loads of endermen. Let <laughs> me fly away and just despawn these. But anyway, as I was saying, I'm sure we'll have plenty of gunpowder now. These chests are long here. I'll use those to make a new shulker box worth of firework rockets. And then I'll grab all my maps because I think I am ready to begin the massive job of exploring the world, filling in all these maps. Now, I'm not actually going to use spawn as the central bit for this world map because most of the things that I've built are kind of from spawn, spawns that way. They're more from spawn and then in that direction, you know, like the EOL farms and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? After a bit more thought, I'm going to use my house as the center. I, th I think that makes a lot of sense. Everything else revolves around this part of the world. So I'm going to clear out the hotbar and start with map number one. Okay. I, I, the, the problem is I'm not going to have a great deal of space, but th this is map number one and that is my house. Okay. Fully filled in. Oh, look at the volcano. It looks insane. And then from my house, I'm going to go a further 25 maps in this direction. So by the time I'm done, I should have 20 six maps in total. If you think I'm going to be doing this on foot, uh, you've got another thing coming. I'm going, to, I'm going to fly to speed it up a little. It's actually very cool to see it in a form of a map as well. I love it. And basically every time I get a full hot bar, that is when I just need to land and organize the maps so that they are in order of ID number. I'm telling you now, this right here is a foolproof system. And this is the end of row number one. And look at that. It even just about has room for the old floating village, which is cool. And now before I create too many other maps, I'm going to go and get these placed down just to test everything out. And why the heck is there a shulker box? Did it, wait, did I just leave the shulker box? What, what, what kind of idiot does that? Puts all these maps down and then forgets about them. Good job I saw this on the way past. All right, map room. Prepare to have some maps added. I'll just do a strip of two going all the way across. And then from the middle, I need to have some sort of system where they go into my inventory in an order. And starting from here. Now, is this the right way? Yes. This They're all fitting together correctly. So we just keep going like this. And it works perfectly. It just goes nicely up to there. Although I'm going to take this map because I need to know the exact coordinates of how far in that direction to go all the way. If I was being smart, I would have remembered to check when I was there, but I, I didn't, so <laughs> we're going to do it now. This is the spot. So now I've got a good plan, which means I can do the other 24 maps going in this direction. That is the final one, and that is a forest on fire. So now to get them all placed down. Perfect. That is one row down, 49 to go. So I'd better get busy. I've filled in loads and loads of maps, but I'm starting to get a bit confused about which row corresponds to which. Especially considering when I hover over them, they now say unknown map. What's, what's that all about? That's definitely going to make life harder. Okay, okay, if I open them up, then it, it tells me what the map is. Yeah, but that's that's quite a lot of effort. Anyway, I guess it's not too bad then. I've got them organized and ordered. Now to start placing them in one long row like this. I have to say, it is looking pretty cool. I can't wait to see the, the fully finished thing. And I reckon looking down at it from the top is going to look even better. Well, there's quite a long way to go before I'm ready for that. So first, I'm going to take a load of these item frames and get them placed down on this side. And then I will collect every single map to fill in this side. And that's it. That is done. The final map of that half is filled in. Talk about big projects. This has taken ages. And I've seen loads of cool things as I've explored the world, like a 
A floating pillager outpost, how weird's that? And now with them all nicely organized into the correct shulker boxes, I can gather them all up and place every single one down. And it is done. Doesn't it look cool? It looks really cool and it's only halfway finished. It's definitely now starting to cause some frame drops. And before I go ahead and generate all the other maps, there's some other things I want to do. Such as modifying this hero of the village farm so that it is not full of cartographers. Because I don't need the maps anymore. I've got all the maps I can need and I don't really need paper from them either. But there is really only one way to do the necessary modifications and that is through brute force. I'm sorry guys, but, but you've just got to be cleared out. Then I can make way for these guys, which I'm going to make into clerics so I get loads of redstone. Well, well, once I remove the water and put the rails back in, I will anyway. The necessary modifications have successfully been made. I need to get rid of this cartography table and then fly back home to get a brewing stand. Whilst I'm here, I'll also grab lots and lots of emeralds. And then like before, the plan is to trade with them. And okay, that, that's not quite right. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, the plan is to trade with them. I'm going to get max redstone every time because it'll just be handy to have. That looks in the trade. The unfortunate thing is... I. Okay, he died. But the, the brewing stand can't be moved, so I have to manually break it and place it because it's, it's not pushable by a piston. So it'll be a little bit more effort than the cartographer one was, but uh, it'll, it'll still be worth it. Plenty of going in, but I should also probably turn this breeder back on since baby villagers are going to be quite important for the... Uh, the whole operation. This adult villager cannot be here because he is definitely going to ruin everything. And I can get back to trading with the villagers. Already my villagers have run out, so I'm uh, going to have to wait for you guys to grow up. And once they do, I'll have a good steady stream of villagers available. I have got a lot of baby villagers there. As you can see, they are now just starting to grow up, so I should start sending them in and continue the trading. I just love watching all the baby villagers grow up once and suddenly become adults. It just, it just looks so funny. And with that, there are now 100 in that slot which is quite a lot if i put 100 into every single slot then the farm will give me 6,000 redstone per hour not bad but also not good enough so i'm going to go ahead and put 200 in there i want to get to the point where i'm getting so much redstone per hour that it's better than my raid farm so it's it's going to take quite a bit and that is 200 and now i'm going to move the activator rail along one and then i'll fill up every single one of these slots with 200 villagers each good job i've got millions of baby villagers ready to go my goodness it's taken a long time the the, the frame rate is kind of dead now <laughs> let's look over there and it's fine but there's a lot of villagers over there about 1400 to be exact with many more babies over there i i need to shut off the breeder which i can do by flicking every single one of these levers and since there's a couple extra villagers here I might as well send them through as well. My PC does not like this one bit, but making the necessary modifications is... Yeah, it's, it's not going to be very fun. But thankfully, it's very straightforward. Mission accomplished. Now all I'm missing is seven buckets that are going to be filled up with water and used to waterlog the slabs. And it's done. My redstone hero of the village farm is complete. And the best thing is, I got so much redstone from that. Not just that, but all of this as well. Now I'm going to turn off the mob switch and then I can test out the farm, see just how good it is. In theory, it's 12,000 redstone and 12,000 lapis per hour. But because there's so many villagers, the TPS is about half of what it should be. So it might be closer to about 6,000 hour. But anyway, we're going to test that and find out. So I'll switch the farm on, jump into here and wait for the pillagers to come up. And then I can get hero of the village. And then all these guys will throw me loads and loads of redstone. There's thousands of them. A good amount of time has passed and I'm very curious to see how much redstone I've got into the first chest and straight Okay, it's, you know what? It's looking very, very nice. I'm going to be turning everything into blocks so that I have more space. And let's see just how much we get. And it has to be said that is a pretty good haul of goods. Plus, it's my first ever lapis farm. I've got loads of that now. Plus, I've grabbed all the extra maps and paper that I had because you just never know when they could come in handy. And I get all these lovely extra resources dropped off back at home. Now, if I think back to the project of the map, I do, of course, still need to fill in all the rest of them. But I also think it'd be cool to have like a couple of pixel arts that show up on this map. They'd have to be pretty big and I'd probably have to add them after I've mapped everything out so that I, I know where they'll be best to be put. I have ideas for two pixel arts. They're going to look amazing. But right now, my first priority is to map out the rest of my world. And stealing this map might be useful so that then I can tell exactly where the starting point's going to be. And according to the map, it's going to be right here. So... I know what I need to do. I just need to get busy exploring. And that's the first two rows obtained. Meaning I've just got 22 more to go. And that is every single one done. And before I place all of them down, I'm going to make a pixel art up in this corner here. It's definitely going to be quite a hefty project, but it will look amazing when it's done. There's a lot of blocks to place, so I am just going to get straight to work. I 
And finally, it is done. My goodness, that was a project. And how does it look? How does it look from the top view? It looks awesome, doesn't it? It looks really, really cool. Although this weather has meant that it does snow on part of it, which is not good. I'm going to have to wait for that to end. So whilst I do that, I can remove this platform and I'll also start updating the maps so that they properly show Sonic. Although I've said that, this one can't really be updated until I <laughs> remove the snow. Otherwise, Sonic will just show to have a white patch on his head, which I do not want. So let's get rid of it. That is job done. So I'll now get back to filling in the maps. All the maps have been filled out and successfully organized in a shape, which means it's time to get back home and drop off all these spare shulker boxes. And then I can begin the end of this project, which is to first add these nine maps into the corner and see just how cool that looks. I'm, uh, wait, I did we well, missed a bit. Oh, wait, I got these the wrong way. Hold on. Now I can see just how cool that looks. I, I look at that on the map. <laughs> I love it. And then I can fill in all the item frames on this side of the map that still needs to be done. That is mission accomplished. And now it's time for me to get busy and place down every single map that I have. And it is complete. And a little bit laggy when I tried to look at it. But I have to say, I think it's amazing. My entire world mapped out. And it has a very, very cool Sonic Easter egg up in the corner. And if I look from above, it looks even cooler. I'd absolutely love it. 